Okay. Look at Mama Jarg's game, by the way. And his teammates are doing great. Okay. I'm going to his game. Because Mama Jarg is playing a 1900 mm -hmm. and is not winning. Oh, okay. How is this possible? In fact, this is a forced draw. Knight takes e4 now, and then white can never lose. You go knight e4 and then rook g8, and you get a, you're threatening to get a queen. There's no way yep. to lose that. Yeah. Is he going to do it? I don't know. He yes! Or he's gonna go, Jendi. He's going to play rook g4 check and then take the bishop on d4. That's what he's doing instead. Instead of rook g8, I have king e4, rook g4, king moves, take the bishop, and then bring your king in and get a new queen. And then rook has second. This is the biggest upset in pro chess league history. Well, Alexandra Botez and I will be bringing you commentary from the Pacific Division of the Pro Chess League. Alexandra, we've had a little bit of fun behind the scenes, and uh, how's it going with you? Uh, good as usual. Happy to be here doing commentary with you. Happy to see chat excited. I'm ready to see some interesting games. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Um, there was a very exciting first round of action today. I was watching it for the last few hours. I grabbed a bite to eat, and now I'm ready to talk for hours and hours oh, and so hours. So you're not going to be hangry this time? No hangriness whatsoever. Okay, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, there, there it is, chat. Robert is going to be in his best mood today, so it's going to be the best PCL commentary stream of all time. No uh, pressure. I hope so. Well, you know, you're feeling better, so that's a good start to our yes. you know, team here. And speaking of teams, we just should go, while this match is just getting underway between the Minnesota Blizzard and Dallas Destiny, we should probably talk about wh what we, who we are, what we're doing, what this league is. And so I have some graphics to pull up for everybody here. We have All right. the standings. And we see in the Pacific Division, before tonight's action, we see that the Chengdu Pandas were in first place with 99 and a half points. Dallas Destiny just behind them in the Minnesota Blizzard. And we just talked how Minnesota is playing Dallas. That matchup will be very important because either of these teams can leapfrog the Pandas and end up in first place after today's action. And we'll see, pull up the schedule here. Just so you know, this is week 6, February the 12th. We'll be back after this one on Thursday. That's Valentine's Day because we love chess. We cannot avoid it. We are married to our chess commentary, so we'll be back Thursday as well. But for now... Chess, chess, chess it is. And 
Well, I see three games underway, so where's the fourth game from this match? That's my first question. Because right now I see th yep. three games, and I'm hoping that... Maybe they're just starting a little late, although I haven't seen that happen before. Um, yeah, big question marks in this match. So I guess we should let... Just dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Well, we have a Catalan in this game between Cameron Wheeler and Andrew Tang. That is Penguin GM1, right? Everybody knows and loves the Penguin on chess.com and on Twitch because he's a very common streamer here. And, okay, Alexandra, we see a position, triple pawns for black. Looks hideous. But then you do a quick pawn count and you realize... Black's actually up a pawn, right? So this is a Catalan where Black went D takes C4 earlier in the game and is left with these triple pawns. So do you have an experience on either side in this kind of Catalan? I don't play Catalan here, um, but judging from the position, I would probably prefer to be white here. It just seems like Black's pawn structure is going to cause serious problems later on. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you. You never look at triple isolated sea pawns and think, wow, this, this looks like a great pawn structure. But <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be black here. <laughs> um, I mean, the redeeming quality for black is the knight on d5. Obviously, if white trades, Andrew will be able to take back with a sea pawn and fix a little bit of it, especially since he has an extra pawn. Yep. But white will pretty easily be able to kick the pawn out of e5 with e4. So do you see any other redeeming qualities for black? Yeah, I guess the open B file, right? So when you have these kind of ugly pawns in the same line, that means that the files next to them are open. So a quick rook to B8 will hit the B2 pawn, followed by maybe queen to B4. If you play E4 for white, then the knight can come to B4 where it's going to hop into the D3 square. So although that is a pawn on C4 that's not that easy to protect, it can be used still, and so that knight will hop into D3, and that will be unpleasant for white. Yeah, that's... A great plan to point out, actually. It seems like Black's Knight will actually be a little bit more tricky than it initially appeared. Yeah, I would probably play Knight E4 here just to get my Knight out of the way of the C pawn. Because if I move my Knight to E4, then next move my Queen can try to take on C4. Or if after Knight E4 you play Queen B4, simultaneously protecting the pawn and coming after my B2 pawn, I still have Rook A to C1. And once I take C4, behind it C6 will be a, an easy target to try yeah. to exploit. And yeah, the comes... dominoes will start falling down after you get C4 and double up on the C file. That's not looking good. And that's why the ambulance is coming by. I think it's for Black's pawn structure on the queen side, saying this needs some surgery. Nothing's going to oh, help. Oh, how there I miss the there, ambulance there it sounds. Is. It's been too long. I'm going to have to use my emotes now because, well, I have them. Might as well you use have them, them so. So here they come. Here they come. There we go. In the chat. Hess is getting into Twitch, you guys. He did a stream on Friday, and now he's using emotes. Yep. He's so fast. I'm so proud. <laughs> um, you know, I'm proud of you, because before the show, we were just messing around, and your pop culture references, your knowledge of them has really grown in the last week. I've been studying, preparing for this moment. I didn't want to let you down again, so... Um, Okay, so I'm, I'm actually just reading to figure out what's going on with the fourth, but we'll go to a different game. Um, and 94 was just played by Cameron Wheeler. And by the way, Cameron Wheeler is a very strong player, a young international master from the Bay Area whom I've played before. So he's not going to go down lightly if he is, in fact, going to get in trouble in this game. But I like his position thus far. But we have yep. uh, Zhu Jiner, who has been a marvel in the Pro Chess League this season. She went three and a half out of four last week against the San Diego Surfers. Alexandra, I don't know if you remember, but that was a 14 to 2 demolition of the surfers by the destiny. So she's. Oh, that's. Uh, why? <laughs> it's just terrible. <laughs> Hopefully, she's going to continue and take down a GM here in her first game of the matchup. Yeah. Although, judging from her position, I guess it's, it's still pretty early. Um, no side has an advantage yet, so she she has what, been taking care of her time management as well. What do you think about this last decision by Fidel Corrales to go bishop takes h4? Well, he's not playing for the pawn grabbers, but he's certainly <laughs> playing like it. Yep. Um, I, I understand that he wanted to take a pawn, 
unfortunately, if he's going to castle later on in the game, he's going to have to face a much more dangerous attack. So he's committing to keeping his king in the center. Yeah. And with white's active pawns, super active bishops, I don't know if that was the best decision. Yeah, because if you ever castle kingside, which you were just pointing out, you're immediately going to face a sacrifice on h6. Right? Bishop will take on h6, the queen will take back once you take my bishop, and then I'm going to checkmate you down the h line. So I think we can expect, safely assume, that Fidel Corrales is not going to be casting kingside. In fact, he may try to castle queenside, which is also dangerous with not that many pieces on the queenside, but that either he keeps in the center or goes queenside, because like I said, he's not going kingside, that's for sure. Uh, yep. And, and now white can even play this move pawn to g5. You have to calculate, like, if I go g5 and black goes h5, then what happens with this push? Because white can follow up with moves like f4 and quickly trying to create a pawn storm in the center. There's a king in the center. You can go after it quite quickly. Yeah. I mean, in, in this kind of Sicilian, black would try to get a counterattack on white's king. But if he is going to be forced to castle queenside, he's going to lose that counterplay and just be in a worse position. Yeah, absolutely. I got to give a quick shout out to my friend Miranda, who is tuning in. Um, so thank you, Miranda. She just texted me. So, Aw, shout out. And also shout out to Face Chess. Good to see you back on Twitch. Always a pleasure to see you in chat. And you too, Jedi Knight, since we're doing shout outs. Oh, and Face Chess is using my uh, emote over there. So There you go. Got to love that. Oh, boy. Uh-oh, Jujiner went on offline. Oh, no. Well... She'll be Dallas Destiny has been having Wi-Fi problems. I'm surprised that they had them earlier. If you remember the game with Razan Prewa too. Yep. And they haven't fixed them yet. It's a, a little concerning. So, you know, at least learn from your mistakes. But hopefully, she'll be back in time. Yeah. Well, okay. It looks like she's back now, and she does have a tough decision to make here with how to pile up pressure on the H file. Do you make a move like Rook? Okay. She said Queen, queen G2. As soon as I can say. Maybe you could have went rook h5. And the point of rook oh, h5 aggressive. is so white can play g5 without allowing black to push that pawn. So something like that mm -hmm. was certainly a worthwhile thing to look at, but instead she goes in, uh, for queen to g2, which yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, she's still trying to go for g5 here. It's not as glamorous a move as rook h5, but I think it serves a similar purpose. Yeah. Which so is nice because she has a pretty intuitive plan here as white. Yeah, now f4 can be played since the queen protects the g-pawn. That's why f4 could not be played a move ago. So, yeah, I think her plan is pretty obvious in that sense. But that's sort of the problem. I mean, Alexandra, maybe you can speak to this as well. I've had mm -hmm. so many games where my plan is just, like, so straightforward. But then I get tunnel vision. And I think I'm just going to do this, this, and this, and not really give my opponent's position full credit. And then right. I would see, okay, I, I went through with my plan. Everything in my head when I visualize this position looked good. But now that I'm here... I'm not even better. That's actually a great point, and I think it happens very often in rapid time controls. The less time you have, the more you're just tunnel vision focused on what your plan is here. So hopefully she doesn't get too distracted, because if she does, Black might be able to get an attack as well. I like that he's blocking up the position, so at least he can stop a little bit of White's pawn push here. Yeah, I mean... The g5 stops the push, but it also leaves behind this h6 pawn. So now we'll move like rook h5, and then rook d to h1 makes perfect sense. And it's funny, because in a uh, Sicilian like this, you target the d6 pawn, and now you have the h6 pawn. But if this bishop goes home to f8, it suddenly protects both pawns at the same time. But I would just play rook h5, play rook d to h1 next, and challenge black setup over there on the king side yeah. like, i was just gonna say when your bishop has to go back on f8 and you haven't castled yet that's normally <laughs> not a good sign no I, I i hate this position from black i think objectively it's a very fighting position but i prefer yeah. to have my king being safe even for the cost of a pawn so right now i'm really liking right. Eugenia's chances she just plays f4 trying to break yep. open the position king is in the center so why not um it's one of those moves where either it's perfectly timed or you rushed it, but I think it's a very good move in this yeah. position. And I, I read a tweet, and Chad is saying this, that apparently uh, Ju Jinner is being coached by Ding Loren. I don't know if this is true, but if it is, it seems like his teaching techniques have definitely be show, been showing in the last couple of games. Yeah, pretty weak coach there, right? Only the uh, number yeah. three chess player in the world. Yeah, no big Honestly, deal. Honestly, if it's not top two, are you, is he even a teacher? Oof. Wow, we're being told, by the way, that Dallas's board one, 
forfeited the game. That's why you see the scores 1-0 in favor oh. of the Blizzard. That was a because his opponent logged in too late. Just didn't log in at all, I think. Well, uh, yeah, Dallas Destiny's strong with the Wi-Fi gambit. <laughs> they, they've been playing it before. It seems like they're continuing here. I like that. That was that is awesome. The Wi-Fi <laughs> gambit. That is that is excellent. I hope um, yeah. Sam Copeland, if you're listening, you always. I can't wait. He's gonna come into the chat and be like, "I'm always listening." But that's something <laughs> to use in your article. Sam writes great news recaps of these events. So, okay, we've been checking out Zhuzhiner's game for a long time. Let's go to the game we haven't seen between Conrad Holt and Thomas Beardson. Beardson is sure. a very, very, very good board two, excuse me, board three. I believe mm-hmm. it's board three, yes, board three for the Minnesota Blizzard because he is 2476 and he's a strong IM fighting for the GM title. And here we see this position. It came from a French defense Yay. Alexandra, I was waiting for you to, to cheer. You know I will. I, I knew it as soon as I, the words were leaving my mouth. It was like the French in my head. I was like, no, but then I was like, oh, Alexandra's going to be happy. So it's worth it, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah you know I, I know, I know the right way to react in these situations. But this is not your sort of typical French because black here, here has a lot of activity. And that's yeah. not to dismiss black's <laughs> activity in all French defenses. But there's no light square bishop that's usually behind a pawn on e6. So that's mm-hmm. good news. And this queen on c5, rook on c4, like that's already aiming down the c yeah. file. More, <coughs> excuse me, more reminiscent of a Sicilian defense in many ways. Yeah, and you rarely ever see white castling queenside in a French. I mean, before I looked at the opening, I also thought this was a Sicilian. Yeah, because if we go back to move 10, black decided mm-hmm. to castle kingside, white went yeah. queenside. Very, very interesting variation here. Um, so a question for you, how would you think about the pawn structure here? Um, the only pawn that is not on the seventh or second rank is the one on E5. So both sides are pretty safe and solid so far. Yeah, but I definitely prefer white's position to answer your question because at some point I really want to play Bishop G5 to, mm-hmm. to either take your knight in F6 or really, if I could put my pawn from G2 to G5 and then take over the D7 and D5 squares, to mm-hmm. me, that's where the game is going to come down to. Because, yes, black has this queen and rook on the king side and it looks active, but I have a pawn on B2 protecting my knight on C3 and my rook does right. well to help defend there so you can't sacrifice an exchange or anything like that. So at some point, I'd really like to play bishop G5, take your knight, and then take over these light squares here, D5 and D7. Yeah, that seems like a good plan for white to try to do here. Um, I guess black will be able to try to stop it. And if white is able to play g4, he'll try to go g6 right away. Um, but that being said, it really weakens the dark squared pieces by his king. And white has a dark squared bishop and his queen nearby. So not sure what Conrad is going to do. Yeah, after that pawn starts pushing. And even a simple rook h to d1, right? Like, mm-hmm. white's moves are fairly straightforward. You just yep. bring this rook, double it up, and just claim that, well, what, where is black's counter play going to come from? And if you play rook h d1 now, right, you can't even play a move like e4 because the pawn is pinned to your queen on a5. And mm-hmm. if you play b5, you lose the e5 pawn, similarly. What about bishop b4 and going for a similar idea of taking on c3 and trying to double up white's kingside pawns? Yeah, you could do that, but then white just moves the knight and says, I'll play knight d5. Let's trade on this on this file, because I don't care how I get to the d5 and d7 squares as long as I get there. So That's true. You know, after bishop b4, knight d5, you trade knights, which I don't really see much better here. Then I'm attacking your queen on a5, my rook can come to d7, my c2 pawn is defended by my queen on f5, so all is looking good for white in a position like this. And bishop d2 was played, so this is a repetition. I don't really like Beardson's decision to repeat, but okay, he's playing a very strong grandmaster in Conrad mm-hmm. Holt. It's not like the position is dead, lost, or anything like that for black, so if he's feeling a little uncomfortable, then maybe it makes sense for his team to just be solid. Right. And he is getting a little bit lower on time, so maybe he just didn't see an idea yet or he changed his mind. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yep. And we have the uh, San Francisco match against the surfers underway. I have another. Yes. Just to pull this up real quick, I have another uh, scene here with all the boards and the players and the to remind everyone what happened in the Atlantic Division earlier today where the London Lions beat the Montreal Chess Bros 9.5, 6.5. And, 
The Saint oh, man, that's... Yeah, oof. it was not a good day for Montreal fans. Um, Ugh, but Saint or Louis, Canadians. Or Canadians oh. at large. But we're here, we're doing commentary together. It's getting better in yep. for Canadians. Um, but we forced peace treaty over here, that's okay. <laughs> well, the Wi-Fi gambit, you know, the Hess treaty of peace between himself and Botez, it's got to it's gotta work yeah. out. But, exactly. Uh, the St. Louis Archbishops beat the Sopranos 11 half, 4 and a half. So that's a good rebound for them after losing to the New York Marshals last week. The Pawn Grabbers won nine and a half, six and a half over the Miami Champions. And I picked Edward Song of the Pawn Grabbers for my team, and he did very well today. And the New York Marshals eked by the Webster Windmills, I think, to overtake them. Let me pull up the standings really quickly here just to see mm -hmm. where the. Marshals were behind the windmills in the standings, and they defeated them head to head. Which means the, you know, maybe the Marshall was still Marshall would still be one game behind, one point behind in the standings, I believe. But we'll get that updated, and I'll let everybody know how that will turn out for the next week. But nice, nice performance by the Marshals in the last couple of weeks here to defeat, soundly defeat the St. Louis Archbishops, and then to follow that up with another victory today over the windmills. They're proving that they want to win their division. They're definitely fighting hard. So we have seen quite a bit of a shakeup since over the last three weeks or so. Teams that were leading the pack are now getting pushed out because everybody's trying so hard. Yep, absolutely. Um, so what is the deal here? So I, I was checking on uh, Ju Jinner and F Fidel Corrales' game again okay. since she seemed to have an interesting position. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Hey, look, her rook did end up on H5, as you brought up earlier, just in a different time. It did indeed, and she just took on E5, so... This looks nice for white. It does, but only if you act very quickly. And what I mean by yep. that is white has uh, restored material equality, right? So it's... Mm -hmm. um, oh, but she's going to trade queens, so rest in peace attack here. <laughs> yeah, I don't love that decision. So what I was about to say before she made her move was that you know you have restored material equality, but actually some of the positional nuances favor black. And mm -hmm. actually, is bishop f6 take b2 just a good idea here? Can I get away with that? Can you get away with bishop f6? Um, I guess white would have to try queen d6. It's the only move that looks like it has any type of counter counterplay. Okay. But after bishop takes b2, does white have anything solid? Well, maybe you can play with, for a queen takes a6 is one option. Well, no, queen a6, that will not probably just get me mated. So um, maybe e5, cutting off your queen and bishop. That's certainly mm -hmm. an option. And rook d1, just to attack your bishop on d7, that's probably honestly just the best move, is putting yeah. pressure along the d file on this bishop. So, you know, it just goes to show there are a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice a little bit there, but there are a lot of different variations here that look pleasant. And that's what I was saying, you know, if you just, go with the moves, then you allow bishop f6, take b2, and you have to figure out, am I actually right. in time to launch an attack of my own, or did I just give up the pawn in front of my king and now have no king safety? Yeah, I really hope that she has a plan there, because just giving up a pawn, especially when it's in front of your king, sounds like the worst pawn loss possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but... I'm excited to see how this game plays out. It's been my favorite from the three we've seen so far. Yeah, we can move on as well to the San Francisco matchup against the San Diego Surfers because their games have gone away. We'll just, just show the names of the players and things like that because we do want to focus on the games that are further along. But we have Daniel mm -hmm. Naroditsky with the white pieces against Melik Serhachian, Daniel Naroditsky, Daniel... Wow, that pronunciation. <laughs> well, I know Melik very well, so okay. Um, he's he's a buddy of mine, so yeah. I mean, I've you coached made sounds I didn't know <laughs> English speakers could make. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, I coach the U.S. women's team. He is the captain, so uh, we've we traveled together to Batumi and did that. So anyway, Melik is with the black pieces here. White has the two bishops. Black is trying to stabilize and equalize, saying, "Okay, my I have a knight, but it's not so bad here." And oftentimes you want to reroute this knight to c6. So if you can get mm -hmm. knight b8 to c6 in a timely fashion, you're putting pressure on d4 and closing down the queen side. But of course, you can't play knight b8 so easily when there's a little problem with the rook hanging on c8. Right. Um, I mean, rook c1 seems like it temporarily, if potentially permanently, stops this plan. Although I guess later on, 
black will still be able to reroute like that. I honestly, um, I might play bishop c2 here, Alexandra. And the reason why is once ooh. I play bishop c2, I cut off the rook from the c file, right? And, and we both are competing for that open file. But if I can get bishop c2, rook c6, rook a c8 super quickly, I'm very happy to seize control of the file. That being said, even once I get that file, it's not like I'm doing that much with it. So white can play b4, b5, or something mm -hmm. of that nature to counteract my idea. Yeah. Um, it seems like the bishop pair has the advantage in this position, even though it's closed, um, which tends to be the rule we always point to when asking, are the bishops or the knights better here? And it seems like the reason for that is just because they're able to move around and switch sides a lot faster, but also that position that the position is likely to open up soon. Right, right. Um, so I actually just saw an interesting message by Chris B. Hurricane. So I recently got back into chess and I want to get better, but I have a problem with seeing the whole board. Do you have any tips for that? Well, yeah, you were talking about this earlier. Yeah, I was, right? Um, so tips for seeing the whole board is, well, you just can't get the tunnel vision. Like when you come up with an idea, that idea may be good, but things change, right? Your opponent may play something you're not expecting in which case you have to reevaluate your lines of calculation. You can't just go in thinking, I'm going to do this, this, and this, no matter what my opponent does. So It's basically like real life. You know, you got to be flexible to changing circumstances. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that is a good way to uh, bring it full circle into Chess's life. But um, no, absolutely. You really have to be able to deal with the change Wait, circumstances. It a lot of people say Hess's life. If Hess's life and Chess's life. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. changing the game just so I can change the topic. So Amazing. Sam Shanklin is playing with the black pieces against Keaton Kira. And, well, I love Shanklin's position. I think he might already be winning on move 12 for black. Mm -hmm. Because look at this back rank, Alexandra. This king on e1, still in the center. Okay, the black king's on yeah. e8 as well. But what are you going to do if you are white here? Where does your rook go? That's that's a good question. I mean, if he goes back on b1, uh -oh. he's just losing the file. He's getting knight a3, so he's getting fork emoted over here. Yep. If he takes the rook, queen takes, it's still very awkward for black because he controls the entire center with his knights. Black is going to have a hard time castling because he might potentially get checked. You, you mean white's going to have a hard time castling? Yeah, white. Yeah, Thank I you. was like, yeah. you're saying everything correctly? But you're saying it like black is having these difficulties. I was like, no, actually, I think you're right. Just you're just misspeaking. And that's why we're a team. Oh, that's the only reason, though. That's what I've been told. There we go. Uh oh, somebody said, "Let's go, Shanky Panky" in the chat. So I guess that's his nickname. Yes, he. I think that was his old handle on like ICC. Oh, Shanky Panky. Okay, that makes sense. But his position just looks excellent. This rook, as you mentioned, once the rook leaves a1, the black rook will come to a3 immediately putting pressure on the c3 pawn. That's a backwards pawn. The knight on c4 is great. The knight on e4 is similarly great. I think it's just pretty much lost. And um, you know, just to show one variation, if you take my rook on a8, mm -hmm. I have queen takes a8, you play bishop takes c4. You're hoping yep. that this pawn on d5 is overloaded because it has to take the bishop on c4 and loses its defense of the knight on e4. But as you see, right, look at that back rank that we've been talking about. If black plays a move like queen to a1 check, well, here is the real problem already, that if you move your king to e2, I can just simply take your rook on h1 and claim, well, I'm up in exchange at the minimum, but I'm probably just going to go ahead and mate your king as it's stuck in the center. So yeah, can't do um, things like that. And it's interesting because most of the times when one side has a lot of back rank threats, it's mostly in the end game or the late middle game, but it happened really early here in the opening because Sam was able to open up the A file so quickly in a way that was advantageous to him. Yep. And Keaton just didn't develop fast enough. So pretty rare to see stuff like this. And if you look at the move order by Shanklin, so let's just go back to move seven. Mm -hmm. White went B4 saying, I'm trying to win your bishop. And instead of moving the bishop to B6 right away, he went, Shanklin went knight C6. And here's the difference. If you play bishop B6, then white plays A5 and takes this bishop on the very valuable B6 square. Because after pawn takes b5, pawn takes b6, rook a1, mm -hmm. queen a1, you can't move your c pawn because the knight on b8 will be hanging at the end of this variation. And that is devastating. So 
and it looks like the trade happened in Queen C1. It has been played in the game. We'll get back to that in just a quick second. I want to further illustrate mm -hmm. the problems on move 7 after B4, why Knight C6 was played. If you play um, A takes B5 as black, then white plays A takes B5 back, pinning the bishop on A5 to the rook mm -hmm. on A8. So that would be something that black doesn't want to allow. And that is why the game continuation saw knight c6, and after it takes a b5, now after a b5, knight takes a5 came in. The rook is protecting the knight on a5, and so there's no pins there. And that's a very important nuance that Shanklin demonstrated for us. Yeah. He had very sharp calculations in that line. He didn't miss a beat. He had clearly seen this from the start of it or maybe prepared it from home, but this is a really nice line. Yeah, this is. I mean, he he's pretty well known for having very strong openings, so. Yep. And not surprised. There's going to be a, a knockout in just like a few moves here because you can't have your king. You can't, can't even castle if you're white, right? If you give white another move, castling hangs the bishop on e2. So, castle is not possible. He just took on b5. Oh, and now, <laughs> now he's bringing another piece pointing towards white's king. Oh god, this is just really painful for, for poor Keaton here. Keaton can't move. There's nothing to do. If you go queen d1 to protect your bishop on e2, you lose the pawn on c3. So, I mean, you can just resign here and not, like, think that you're resigning too early because it's just completely right. lost for Keaton Kira. Yeah. And thank you, Tagvon, for gifting me a sub to the chess.com channel. I appreciate it. Whoa. Okay, I, I'm going over the Zhu Jinner game because it looks like she might be getting checkmated. Here comes mate. Oh. Wait, Ju Jr. is getting checkmated. Yes, she is. Uh -huh. opponent, it was a tricky position. Her opponent had 13. She she lost. She resigned. And I see Wesley So in the chat, in the game chat. So Wesley So has been calling the shots there as well. Shout out to Wesley, one of the best players yeah. in the world. Just um, really, Cheering on uh, Fidel. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a brutal way to finish this game. We can take a peek at quickly at what happened. It mm -hmm. looks like the Queens got traded on G7, or sorry, on E5. And then yep. all these trades saw a, an opposite colored bishop's endgame where black is better because yeah. of the activity of the king. And we'll just go through it. Okay, of course, there's going to be improvements for both sides. But the king went to e5, and Jujina won the a pawn but lost her e pawn. And look what Fidel Corrales did. He just pushed his pawn up to f4, and the bishop is very advanced. These pawns are stuck on the queen side. She can just keep this position because... She can't move her king to the B file without losing her bishop. That's a problem. But right. she can just kind of sit there. And I think it's what she tried. But unfortunately, Fidel Corrales' king was very menacing. And she blundered a checkmate down the A file to end this game. Wow. Well, that's why the king is very powerful in the end game. Not only was he centralizing it in case that the pieces were going to be traded off, but he even used it for the attack. I think this was... Very excellent play on his part. Yep. And let's go to Andrew Tang's game because I see there are two rooks on the seventh rank for Cameron Wheeler, but Tang probably has a ton of checks to um, save the day. Yeah, queen e2 check. And it looks like it likely will yep. be a draw by repetition. King h3 yeah. uh, it, threatens. Is this pattern called something? I feel like it has a name because it's a very common stalemating pattern. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't know. If, Chad, if you guys know what the name is, let us know. Otherwise, maybe it just doesn't have a name. The nameless when... perpetual check. There we go. But Andrew Tang would be pretty... Wait, Queen F1 check? Is there mate? Wait, that's... Wesley So is saying Queen F1 looks like mate, but maybe not. Draw is good. Oh, <laughs> he just changes I, analysis. I was, now I see it. I wasn't looking at the chat there, but I opened the chat up. That's hilarious. Yeah, queen f1 check, you would play that to deliver mate, but if you don't get a checkmate, you yeah. might lose the game once this rook takes his g7 pawn. So it looks like the game is going to be a draw in any second once you press the draw button. Okay, yep. this game has already been repeating. Why is there no automated draw here? This is hilarious. Are okay. they just repeating? Okay, there we go. But let's just go back to that moment where after queen e2 check, queen f1. The problem mm -hmm. is if I go king to g4, right? Then queen f5 comes with check, I think. King h4 only move. g5 check. King h5 only move. And then g4 check leads to mate. Because after g4 check, king just queen g5 is checkmate. So that mm -hmm. would be a way for white to lose the game. But that's why it's important if we just scroll back here. After queen f1 check, instead of choosing king to g4, which leads to a forced checkmate, we go mm -hmm. king h4. 
And now look at the king. You have only one check because white is threatened to take his pawn g7. If you go g5 yep. check, I go king to uh, h5. And I don't think I'm seeing anything better than a repetition for black after queen h3 check, king g6, now threatening back rank checkmates, queen f5 check, and don't go king h5 because if you go king h5, that g4 check is mate. We just, oh, sorry, went over. We just went over that. G4 check, queen g5 mate, unstoppable. Mm -hmm. But after uh, queen a5 check, king h6, now queen h3 check is the only safe check, king g6, and you're making a draw via these queen h3, queen f5. So it's going to be a forced draw no matter what, but I guess Tang didn't want to kind of, he risk saw that it was, yeah, I didn't want to risk close. letting that king in and making some sort of blunder. So that was a really interesting game. Definitely. Um, okay, we have this other game. Conrad Holt has 18 seconds left, and Beardson has six. And who's going to win this pawn race? Black is more advanced, right? This pawn is two squares from queening, but now white's is the same. Black is up a pawn, but it's more important that black's pawns are quicker, right? G3, right. G2, H2, G1. C5, yep. C6. Like, so and those the two pawns can support each other as well, so he can just keep his rook to take care of white's pawns here with no problems. Yeah, get a queen. There it yeah, is. Yeah, there we go. And just take this rook. Oh, took oh he's going for oh, the checkmate. This is smart he's going to be fancy here. If the king goes to the c file, or rook c7 check. Right. Nice. Nice. Uh, so they're being saying... What is the, what is the, the name of that, that draw? The draw? I, I, there might not even be a name. <laughs> I'm, I'm like looking back, trying to hope that someone okay. has told me, but no one has. Uh, wow, Keaton hasn't resigned yet. Um, he's just thinking, though, so let's take a look at another. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, what has happened in the last few moves? Like, bishop e2, took on b5. So took a pawn in c7, because that's a very useful pawn that will certainly come in handy when you're resigning in the next two moves. No, I mean, I'm just making jokes because white's position is so bad. The maybe bishop on g3 maybe is... he's just a masochist. I don't know why he's continuing to play on this position. It's off. I mean, you have to do it for your team, right? You can't just resign. But the bishop on g3 does That's protect fair. the f2 pawn, which means your bishop can move, right? This bishop can move yeah. from e2 next move. But I don't even think I have to allow you to move. And how many good moves do I have here? Uh, knight a3 comes to mind to go knight c2 yep. check. Knight. There are so many discovery attacks after bishop d3, especially since white's king is just stuck in the center there. Yep. This looks, he, I don't even know what to say anymore about this position. Even if I let you trade bishop and castle, you're losing your pawn on c3. So, for example, let's say I play a harmless move like knight c4 to d6. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. wait, why can't I make... Oh, it's white's move. So bishop d3, knight c to d6, and you take my bishop and I just simply take back you're losing your c3 pawn next anyway. So even if you are able to castle, you're just in a terrible position and probably still completely lost. So this is what we consider a hopeless position, especially against someone as strong as Sam Shanklin. And he played bishop d3. I'm sure there's something better than you know, knight d6 takes b5, like knight yeah. a3, then rook takes c3, for example. That just looks amazing. Yeah. There's nothing like showing it's a hopelessly lost position by proving that even the best variation for white here is terrible. Yeah, and, and before uh, the smart viewers say, oh, but the best variation for white is when black blunders the queen or something like that, the, best, the most realistic best hope is still yeah. terrible. Because you know people okay. are going to do that to us. Right? Yeah, of course. I, you're, you're thinking ahead. I like it. We chess are talking style. about chess, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's head on over to the game between Negi. Party margin Yay! Negi, your, your good buddy Negi, and Joshua Shang, because the last move was bishop to c2 by Negi, and Shang is clearly thinking, can I get away with taking this pawn on b7, or is this going to really backfire and I'm not going to be happy with the consequences? Right. Uh-oh. So he took it. Bishop e3. So why I'm concerned a little bit for white, even though maybe I shouldn't be, mm -hmm. is rook b8 takes b2, and then this open second rank is going to scare me. Right, like let's say when you take on e3 with the pawn eventually, this rook yep. b8 takes b2, I see a clear chance to counterattack. Not saying it's winning for black, nothing like that, mm -hmm. but it does scare me. And actually, let's take a look at this line, fe3, rook b8. If you have queen a6, I go bishop d3, and I think I trap your queen on a6. Oh, man. So how should white respond here instead? Um, um, well, you're going to have to take the pawn on c7, 
which I guess is, you know, it's good that you're winning a pawn, but I'm really scared about that second rank. And actually, rook e3, if I go rook takes, pawn takes, then I'm worried about ideas of bishop e4 followed by rook to d2 and just launching a huge attack on this pawn on g2. It's looking very, very scary to me for Joshua Shang. Yep. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not actually, I'm not, I don't know what he's going to be able to do here afterwards. I guess he'll, if he takes back on e3 with a pawn, he'll try to bring in his rook as fast as possible to just have as many pieces by his king's side. But his queen is terribly positioned. His knights are just stuck protecting each other there. It's yep. not looking good. Yep, this is a big problem here. And um, Greg Chiotti, the commissioner of the Pro Chess League, said, Everyone in San Diego, San Diego winning those C7 pawns. So, you know, go for it. Take Negi C7 pawn. You're not going to like the repercussions. Right. Okay, so Sam Shanklin, I just looked at that game. <laughs> and I mean, the SF mechanics have been having a bad season so far. Are they still at the bottom of the pack? Yep, they're, they're at the bottom but, of the pack, but just ahead of the San Diego server. But they won last week, right? So Shanklin played one match earlier in the season, the Battle Royale, and was, did terribly, one and a half out of seven. But last week, they won a nice match in Shangdu, who is the number one team in the division. So it's clear that they have some real talent. And once they, if they keep using this lineup, Alexandra, you're listening. Mm -hmm. You've heard it here first. If they keep using this lineup, they're going to make the playoffs. And not only that, I think they have a chance at making the Final Four. Because this lineup with Shanklin, board one, Negi, board two, and Daniel Naraditsky on board three. That's This is the dream team. I just hope they're able to keep putting them in to play I, I like it honestly i think it's a, a great team look at shanklin just dominating keaton cure here this is this is grotesque at this point because look at this bishop c4 bishop c4 threatens queen e2 mate if you go queen you takes keep e3, coming back to this position i feel like a chess player it's one of those things that's so bad you can't look away <laughs> yeah it's, that's exactly what it is if queen takes e3 in the sequence after rook c4 bishop c4 bishop c4 queen e3 you save mate on e2 but queen b1 check comes in, and your king has no squares. d2 is covered, e2 is covered, mm -hmm. and so you have to go queen c1. I simply take your queen, and that's checkmate. All the squares are taken from your king. So it's Shanklin just putting on a clinic here of how to get a great position out of the opening and just absolutely destroy a very good international master with the black pieces. Yeah, um, and I, I think we should also take a quick look at the game between um, Drev and Rochelle Wu, just because it seems like she has been holding her own and the rating gap Whoa. is about 600 points, which is huge. She's under two minutes, but it's tricky for Black to push this, although I imagine he'll start taking advantage of her low time very soon. Um, Alexander, this is the, one of the positions that people make the mistake in calling it a draw. Right, uh -oh. and that is what you know. You people should not do because the position may objectively be level. I, I like mm -hmm. using the word level, not even, not uh, draw. I, I like level because it indicates to me that yes, the, the position should be approximately equal if you throw it into the computer. I'm sure it says all zeros, but both sides have chances to make progress. And for example, if this knight gets to f4 and mm -hmm. white makes move like g3, then I say, oh, it's pawn h2. If I can bring my rook around to put pressure on it. Or I'll put my rook on e5 with check and try to kick your king back. So I see right. different ways for both sides to make progress. Right? Rook d7 check, clear threat here. And if black tries to play on somehow, well, maybe that rook lands in the seventh rank and you're in big trouble. And rook c7 covering the seventh rank, then knight b5 comes in, hitting a7 and your rook on c7. So these are the kind of things that are worth keeping in mind. Because as soon as you say the position to draw, you stop thinking as much about coming up with plans. That's... A very good point. I will think about that in the next end game we see because a lot of times when you see a position that's more simplified and pieces are equal, it's like, yeah, where are the threats? Most of the pieces are off the board, but it's a lot more complicated than that. So Absolutely. I, I like the way you put it. So we have this game and end game. We have Shanklin the... finally won, so you can stop going back to, well, to I, board. Well, I went, I went to it. Like, oh, look at the checkmate. Knight d2. Shanklin took it. Keaton took the knight on e3, and then knight f3 check forces resignation because gf3, queen e2 would have been checkmate so on the board. So nice. That hurts. That yeah. hurts. So we're going to get rid of this game forever. Sam Copeland, where are you? I can't wait to see you in the chat. You, I know you saw that game. Of course, that has to be a candidate for, well, it was very badly played by White, honestly, but 
any miniature like that over a strong player should be a candidate or a candidate to be a candidate for game of the week. Right. I love um, Negi's position with the black pieces here. He's down a pawn, sure, but I'm not, I don't care the about... The white did finally get that C7 pawn, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Yeah, you know, quantity of pieces, who, I don't care. The quality, look at black's pieces. And if I think of ideas here, one idea that comes to mind is knight to e5. Try to say, I'll yep. give you my knight, as long as your knight moves from f3 and my rook can go to g2 with check. Uh, rook e6, trying to go rook f6. He just played queen to e6, and I think he's play to play g5 and kick the queen away, but... He's bringing in all of his pieces into the attack here. Um, even if... G5 doesn't seem like it was necessary to continue on, yeah, I agree but maybe that. queen e6 has another plan here as well. Okay, so let's think of other plans. So queen e6... Where are you going? Why, why did that queen need to go there? I guess if this rook leaves right. a1, then your queen can jump over to a2. That's sort of a nice thing to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, but what else? Because I'm really trying to... I guess if, if the rook on a1 goes to d1, like you said, there's queen a7. And if the rook from e1 goes to d1, then he can take the knight and win the pawn on e3. Although I don't know if he would want to trade pieces, but he'd still be... Uh, better off there and end up oh, grabbing one more pawn. Absolutely. That looks great for a black. Great simplification, but you're right. Even if you win one pawn, sometimes being up just a pawn in an endgame might not be enough, though you still have a huge attack for black there. So maybe that's a good point. Maybe you're just sort of paralyzing white's pieces because the rook really can't move away from e1. Like you said, the e3 pawn hangs, mm -hmm. and then all the other pawns are collapsing as well. The a1 rook, the queen to a2 looks really scary. Just uh, And their rook a to d1 was played. There you go. Now queen a2. There's some GM play. I mean, Giving your opponent absolutely no good moves here, where even the most natural one of coming to the open file is going to cause more problems for you. Yeah, in fact, there's a very forcing continuation. Let's say you go rook back to a1. I could throw in mm -hmm. rook g2 check, king to h1, and then play the move queen to f2. And the point is I'm throwing rook takes h2 check with the knight on f3 being pinned. It's going to be right. uh, game over. So the rook f3, I'll just deliver a checkmate, bishop f3, and then you have to block. Queen takes g2 would be check and mate. Yep. So Negi, okay, I take it back. I don't care about Shanklin's game anymore. This game is a very good contender for game of the week just because of uh, it wasn't so one-sided from the very beginning. Negi came up with great-looking plans, and he played queen to a2, and he's impressing me. I know he's more or less yeah. a retired or at least an infrequent over-the-board right. player. But, he is busy getting his PhD from MIT in computer science, yeah, which casual, I guess right? takes a bit of time. Casual, right? Just, you know, yeah. no big deal. He graduated from Stanford. Now, okay, he went queen a5. All right, so the queen went to g3 to stop anything from a g2. Simply gobbled up the pawn on a5. Yeah, he, he strikes me as the silent killer type in this position. He hasn't taken out white with a calculated blow just yet, but he's slowly getting the advantage. Yeah, and he's grown it. Larger right? and larger, yeah. yeah. It just This position is awful for, for white. Your king's weak. You're not even up material to show for that weak king. The bishop is strong. C3 is already hanging. Um, I guess white has one hope. It's by knight C4 and try to fork the queen and the rook. But I just... Oh, Hikaru's in the chat. He what? said good day to us. Good to see you, Hikaru. Oh, what's up, Hikaru? Nice to see you here. And <laughs> I see Super Scion being funny. Alexandra went to Stanford. Robert secretly went to Yale. That was a... Secretly? It was a huge... Wait a second. Rochelle... Oh, Daniel just won. Daniel won, and I want to go to Rochelle Wu's game because exactly what I was talking about, right? Now all of a sudden, Rochelle's down a pawn. And this black knight is stuck on b2 for the time being, but mm -hmm. a move like b5 in the near future, followed by knight to c4, will get that knight out. So king to c6 played by, uh, Evgeny, excuse me, Alexei Dreyev. I almost said Evgeny Dreyev, and I was like, that's not right. Okay, it's fine. I mean, they're, they're fun to say Russian names. It's okay. Look at how it happened. Go to move 38 for black, rook to b6, mm -hmm. 39 rook d2, and rook takes b2, using a wow. fork emote to win this pawn here and now all of yeah. a sudden i mean she could have stopped it with before it's not like I, I guess what you were trying to say was that the position was level but there were still a lot of possibilities and calculations that might happen so we should rethink the way we rethink the way it. we think absolutely yeah and b4, 
B4 is definitely a good suggestion, Alexandra, so I, you're totally right. But it's clear she just overlooked that this tactic was even possible. Yep. And actually, she might still hold a draw here because she can. She played A4 just now, which means she's mm -hmm. going to take this pawn on B5, trade off that. And if I'm black, I want to take with the king on B5 and get the pawn as far away as possible, right, using the A pawn. But mm -hmm. there are only two pawns left for black on the king side. So if I can get away with, say, if... if mm, you need to figure out but, how this works here. Right. I mean, the other issue is that um, black is also attacking the F3 right. pawn, right? And she couldn't protect it with the king because then black could have just taken. So she played 97 knight. check and knight of 5. So she's going after the G7 pawn, but G6 here? That looks like it should stabilize the position. Right. Because after g6, she'll have to knight g3, knight e4, but it's too slow because black gets f3, yep. and then h4, and the open b pawn. It's just... Yeah. So she's going to try to go after the b pawn. So she, after knight f3, she'll go king c5, but the knight and two pawns against knight and zero is winning position for sure. Um, you're not going to be able to sack your knight for both of the pawns, which is what white needs mm -hmm. to do. And, well, she did great. I mean, this is a great performance. She made a one-move blunder, a huge oversight that got her into trouble. But that's what I was talking about, right? You have to play yeah. very accurately to hold, even in an equal position, against a very strong grandmaster. Again, the word level comes to mind. Okay, ne Negi has 13 seconds. Yeah, Negi, they're, they're both in time pressure here. Wait, what happened? Um, Why is this an somehow endgame? Somehow he just simplified into an endgame where... I think he simplified he incorrectly. Up a pawn. He is up a pawn. He will probably win this game, but he simplified incorrectly. Why not knight to f2 instead of knight to c5 just there? Knight f2 forked the h3 and g4 pawns. I would have won a pawn. Instead, he brought his knight back to d7. Knight e5 check. You win a pawn. Okay, g5 first to go knight e5 check. Mm -hmm. Knight e5 and take on g4. Here it comes. The knight e4 will there be There you hanging. go. Grabbing one more pawn here, and he saw it. Yeah, because now rook takes e3. Go rook e3 here. Get that pawn. And then what? Knight f6 maybe knight f6 is a good move knight f6 is nice yeah knight f6 is good. okay that was not the move i was going to recommend but okay he's gonna wait he's gonna lose his a pawn so rook h3 excuse me king uh -huh. king f8 king f8 is the best move i guess but okay then, yeah king, oh king okay he played king but f6 now, rook h3 rook h4 no he needs no a, he needs to have been cutting off his king on the e-file he, he totally misplayed this we're in a theoretical draw now Play rook to a3. Poor Negi. Here he goes. Rook. Okay. Can you take that now? Yeah, you can take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he can take it. So take and can. And it's two. draw. It's an easy draw. Why didn't he at least try to trick his opponent? Negi, totally, totally bungled this advantage here. Right. Yeah, because now White has the opposition, so yeah. it's obviously a draw. Yeah. And so we'll um, let them play it out because it's actually instructive for many of our less experienced viewers yeah. of why this and, is a draw. It wouldn't be opposition if the pawn was on the fourth rank and the king was on f3, even if white had opposition, but... So I'll show you where Negi went wrong here. That's so sad. So after um, knight takes g5, rook e3 check, king d2, I move 48. Knight f6 mm -hmm. was the move that I was suggesting because you're attacking yeah. this rook on, um, on d5, then you can move your rook away. So for, where is this rook going to go? If you're rook a5, I go rook g3, right. and your knight's actually trapped on g5. Yeah, and, that, and he, you have to sack your knight for a pawn, and then it's, it's over. It's not enough. So that was a huge missed opportunity by Negi. I mean, he didn't have that much time left, so I can't criticize him too much, but he mm -hmm. had a clear win. Yeah. All right, so we have the start of the Australian match for Seattle, and okay. we have the second round of Minnesota versus Dallas. So both of those are underway. Yeah, if Tagbon is still in chat... I know Tagbon's been cheering for the Australia Kangaroos the entire time. If anybody else has a team they're rooting for, let us know. Obviously, Hikaru was in the chat. I wonder who he could be rooting for. Uh, I'm going to assume he's rooting for uh, Seattle. But I could be oh. wrong. I've made mistakes before. He's probably cheering for his team. Probably. So let's check out, check out the games in the Seattle match. They're pretty much just getting underway, so... Um, they'll be in the opening stages. Gabriel Sargassian mm -hmm. with the black pieces. He's 2691, playing Raymond Song, who's been a formidable board four for Australia all season. I think he's performing well into the 2400s. 
probably in the higher end of the 2400s, and he's 2305, so performing mm -hmm. above his rating. And I like Sargissian's strategy here. If I go back to the opening, we saw yep. four knights and a four knight scotch. And this is what's played by children all over the United States. And instead of playing d5 on move seven, he castled. And what he's done is he's trying to make it less forcing. And in doing so, he's trying to create a bit of an imbalance. We see that black has double pawns, which mm -hmm. we tend not to like. But at some point, we can play d5, or we can play c5, and then try to reroute our pieces. This knight on f6 can come from d7 to e5, for example. I can put mm -hmm. my rook on e5 and use the e-file to attack this e4 pawn. So yep. the four on three on the king side can be a strength for white, or black can take advantage of the open file, the semi-open file, that is, to start piling pressure on this e4 pawn. Right. And he also has ideas like rook b8, which are now yep. possible since he took on c6. I guess the main idea here is when you're a stronger player like Sargisian, you want to keep the position in balance because it's a lot easier to try and trick or outplay your opponent. Right. And it, exactly the opposite of what Dreyev just got against Rochelle Wu, even though he won that game. They're only a yeah. wicked knight per side with some pawns. It's very difficult to win those, even though he did eventually win. But that's just an anecdotal small sample size there. Here, I think there's much more play left. And if you're the stronger player, more often than not, you're going to outplay your opponent in a neutral, complicated position. So right now, queen f6 is an option for black. You're going to rook b8 first, but queen f6 will then come with tempo and the knight on c3 once you play b3. So um, mm -hmm. I like Sargassian's decision-making in this game. Yeah. Well, we'll see if you like it when we come back to check it out a little later. Okay, so which game should we hop on over to now? Let's see. Oh, I think we need to look at the game between Conrad Holt and Sean Nagel. Sean Nagel. That's my favorite yeah, player in the Pro back. Chess League. Yeah, he's back. Whoa. He in the first game, and uh, there's craziness on the board. Is Alexei Shirov playing? Because there is fire <laughs> all over this board right now. Holy. There you go. Holy Sean okay. Nagel. So White's king is on d2. Um, he's not in immediate danger, but it isn't looking good. White also has a nice open g file, though. So if White's not in any danger here, he should be able to uh, remaneuver and put pressure on Black's king side, actually. You know what's funny, Alexandra? Yeah. We're even in material, which I had to count. I was counting pawns in my head while you were talking, but. Okay. If I took this pawn off of e5, mm -hmm. I would be very worried. And I put it on g6. I'm yeah. always, always thinking, like, can I you know, sacrifice some stuff to break open that diagonal and you know, take right. on b2 and then try to win the knight? But at the same time, that would give white the d4 square for his bishop. But now this pawn e4 is hanging, but the pawn on b2 is hanging as well. So you have to be able to calculate like, which pawn is more important, your b2 right. pawn, the e4 pawn. I... I don't know, like if I play knight takes e4 here for white, does black continue with knight takes b2 and just go pawn grabbing? Or do you throw well, a move like bishop to f5? It does seem first? like the line they have to calculate in this position. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff happening here. Bishop f5, knight mm -hmm. takes b2 is an option. Uh, probably something else that I'm not even calculating, but it's, it's a weird, the a2 pawn is sometimes hanging. Not that I really want to take it, but... Ugh. Right. So and yeah, well, White is going to make the decision if he wants to open up the position here. But if you were black to move, say White protected the b2 pawn, what would your plan be? Well, queen b1. There we go. Yep. That's actually just what happens. So yep. we're, we're going to have to figure out Sean's plan. Well, so f2 is hanging, right? I'm not mistaken that. Yep, that is hanging. So if I just take that, I don't really want to take that. That's not, it doesn't seem like a very valuable pawn. If I played bishop f5 to protect e4. Mm -hmm. That looks nice because I want to keep this pawn on e4. That looks like a good pawn just to keep this knight on the d3 square. But do I have some other option? I'm trying to look for something forced, right? I just want to... Yeah. The king's on d2. Like, how do I get it? Right. There's there's no ideas to open and break with the bishop pair, unfortunately. That's why knight takes f2 does look interesting, because if black can trade off the bishop on e3, he's taking off a piece that is helping defend the king, and maybe there's bishop h6 ideas later. Right. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe White doesn't have to take the knight. No, actually, probably, probably do have to take that knight. No. That looks terrible. You're right. I, I don't want to take this knight on f2 if I'm white. The bishop on e3 is very valid. Maybe I'll... Oh, I have rook takes g7, though. Ah, that's that's the defense. Yeah, because this knight will right. be hanging once I throw in this check, and then... Yep. Here comes queen the knight. g1. I end the rook after all of that. It's funny. The queen went to b1, so I forgot I could swing all the way back to g1. That's the tunnel vision, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. Kind of. No, you're right. It's. I was thinking how mm -hmm. that queen is staying over protecting b2, but then you have to remember the queen still has the capability of running all the way back queen side. I yeah. see the king side. Uh, well, so the pawn on h3 is also hanging, but I don't think white <laughs> wants to take it because it opens up the h file more. It's just fascinating how many pawns are hanging in this position, yet how many of them are poisoned. Can't take f2, can't take h3. Right. Maybe his best plan here is to just defend his pawn. Yeah, maybe knight f4 as well is another idea. Just to, mm -hmm. you know, the knight's doing what looks like good work on d3, but if I put it on f4, then I maybe I can take the pawn issue with my knight, which is annoying, and I can threaten your bishop on e2, so I can try to get the bishops. c6, of course, is another option that I would be considering. Mm -hmm. d5 even is one of those moves where you're just like, just trying to create havoc, but c6 yeah. looks you know, more reasonable. The problem with c6 is the d6 pawn becomes the target of the knight e4. Ooh. Ooh, he took on f2. He's gonna fall for rook takes g7. Come on, Sean Nagel. What you doing? Did I pick you on my fantasy team? Let me check out. You were just talking about how, how you like him. But you should still like him as a person, even if the no, chess... I didn't pick him, so it's, it's okay. He can lose. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm over him. Um, Hess moves on fast, chat. I, I move what? I move on. I, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, I'm moving. I'm moving fast on the chat. No, I've just moved. Get over these players very quickly. Fast Mo with the calculations and fast with the emotions. Yep. Hess the machine. <sighs> Coming yeah. to theaters near you yeah, in I, 2019. I'm scared for that film. To come dun, dun, dun. Out. Okay. Dun, dun. So okay, so this stuff is happening. King g7, queen g1 check. Do I mm -hmm. let you just take on f2? Make queen g6 and try to trade the queens. So bishop f2. Mm -hmm. Then I can take your pawn h3 now, I guess. That looks like a pawn. Just hanging. leave the bishop there. Maybe take on h3. Uh, that looks bad because white just puts his bishop back on e3. Yeah. And then the king yeah. lost his pawns and now the h file is going to be open. Although I agree with you. This just looks bad for black. It looks bad, man. <laughs> Looks bad. Is it an action flick? Definitely an action flick, Vardis. Good to see you. Okay, are there any other games we should take a look? Okay, he just played the variation. I guess let's see what happens here. They're both in time pressure. Um, yeah, we've, then we have tons of games. Australia games versus um, whoever they're playing. Seattle. I just forgot and then remembered again. So Queen G1 check. I assume queen g6 is the best move, but I guess if you want to keep the queens on, you'd make them with king h8. I just don't think that the black king will ever find true safety. So Right. And white's pawns are all going to be on one side of the board, right? There's a through d pawns, which means mm -hmm. that you know if I take this h3 pawn as black, I'm not so concerned about a pass pawn be being created in the imminent future. So perhaps I can get away with it. Yeah, I do like the idea of trying to simplify into an end game here. Um, even though White's King seemed unsafe when we looked earlier on, now I'm starting to be more worried for Black. So if he did trade off, he is also continuing his pressure on A2. He might be able to grab a pawn in that endgame. Yeah, the knight ever leaves C3, that pawn will There see. you go, Queen G6. Okay. Uh, your boy heard you. He saw you were moving on, and now he wants to show you that he's better and that he don't need your love. Yeah, anyway. I, I think he's fighting for my love right now. That's a real thing. Yeah, that's probably what's happening. Wait he's a second, Alexandra. Him. Bishop f2, rook takes f2, queen f2, e3 check. Is that a possibility? Hang on. Instead oh, of, okay. Like, I, I just realized, okay, I know these end games look terrible for me. I have a queen on g6. It can mm -hmm. go to the c2 square. If king e3, knight c2 check, probably just wins this rook on a1. and Then the two pieces for the rook looks pretty decent for black okay yeah i see i see the line you're you're showing um 
Right, so that doesn't work. Whoa, this is... I mean, well, Black can't play Queen C2 right away. Well, yeah. To go oh, to... yeah, he can't. Okay, got it, because you, you took with the rook first. Right, got that's it. important, okay. because you might... That actually is a great point. Normally, after mm -hmm. bishop f2, you play e3 check, and you say, well, you take with the bishop. Oh, here mm -hmm. comes Queen C2 check, until you realize you're pinned to your king. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so after Queen C2... Uh, Conrad is still up a piece, so if he can run away, he should be fine. But if Queen E, no matter how you take, I have Knight C2, I think. Yeah, instead of Queen C2, just Knight C2? I think so. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting line. Um. Because you, in, you encouraged me to do this, because you were telling me mm -hmm. how the end game, and you were right, the end game looked very tough for Black, even if you win this H pawn. So, yeah. if I don't have to go into the end game, and I play rook f2, follow e3 check, at least I have some active play and some clear counter chances. Because, right. you know, I have this e5 pawn that will be a, a passer. Mm -hmm. The h3 pawn still feels weak. My rook can swing over to f8 eventually and try to take over that file. So I really like this shot, rook takes f2. I, I don't know if it's best, but I think practically, even if it's not objectively best, I think practically that's the way you have to go here. Got it. And he is taking his time here, and it's definitely a critical position because he can either simplify into the end game or go for this. So hopefully after he sits for a little bit, he'll have his plan sorted out and can make the rest of the moves faster. Yep. So let's pop over real quick to Fidel Corrales versus Cameron right. Wheeler. And let me flip the board because it's getting, confusing me a little bit. So Cameron Wheeler has the black pieces. He is mm -hmm. more active, but he's just went down a pawn here although when i look at a position like this i'm worried about the c3 pawn that's the one pawn white cannot really afford to lose because once that right. pawn is lost then this black c pawn starts rolling so knight c1 is not the move that would normally first come to mind but because mm -hmm. i'm so focused on the c3 pawn knight c1 trying to go to e2 with check and winning c3 is something right. that i'm considering um it Black's king position does look a little bit uncomfortable. Do you think he has to be careful for any uh, checkmate threats? Probably not. Yeah, not for the time being, but you're right. Yeah. It does, does feel uncomfortable for sure. And you can't really move the G pawn, because if you mm -hmm. go to G5, then rook comes to F6 with check, and that doesn't feel so nice. He went G5, right. okay. Interesting. So he's allowing rook F6 check. It just happened. He had to go to H7. If he went to G7, he would have mm -hmm. lost the G5 pawn with check. Because rook g6 check would have come in. Now I play king h7, so knight f3. Yeah, knight f3 looks great. So knight's trying to take on g5. Can come to g5 even if black pushes the pawn. I guess he can play knight e1 if he's just trying to trade knights. And then... But, but then he can't e6. go for the c3 pawn after. He's losing if he trades knights. Yeah, and he loses, he loses the e6 pawn. That's you know, that's the same principle as the c3 pawn. It's a very advanced pass with there. So g4, knight mm -hmm. g5 check, king g8, I guess. Like, how did you play f3 or something like that? Because otherwise, knight e1 check was coming in. Right. I don't know. It's looking. So g4 is played. Knight g5, king h8. Don't like that move. The reason why I don't so, like this move yeah. is it's always going to be on the wrong square. At some point, rook h6 followed by rook takes h5 might happen. And there's right. a rook f, f8 check, and you could take on e6 with check. So rook f8, king g7, knight takes e6 check, wins a pawn with check, yep. protecting the rook and uh, forking. Not for him, giving the king yeah. check. So, so the, the thing white needs to be careful of is if black somehow had his knight on f3 and he's threatening rook g1 mate, that would be his, his counterplay. So maybe if the white knight gets too far from the f3 square, that is a real threat, which makes sense that he just played h3 now. It seems like he wants to make sure there's no scary threats later on. Right. Because so of, it may not have been the sharpest line. Yeah, and you're right, because if you play knight takes e6, then you get mated by force. Knight e1 check, king f1, knight f3 check, and no matter where yeah. your king goes, my rook follows you with checkmate. So that's why h3 was played, to give the king some shelter on the h2 square. And mm -hmm. there's still these checkmate ideas, so you have to keep your knight. Wait a second. Knight to, took on e6. Something about that feels wrong. Where do I go knight e1 check now? Uh, knight e1 check? Well, you can't go to f3 after, which seemed to be the key follow-up yeah. there. What would you do after king h2? I don't know. I'm trying to win your c3 pawn, but I don't see a... So I win 91. King h2, right. of course, will be the move. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so he just takes C3 instead. Yep. And so Black's only down one pawn. Both right. sides have a passer. But White can continue with Rook F6 here. But Rook F6 and... then may have like King G7. And, and then... now you can't push your E pawn yet. My king is getting a little bit more active and towards the center. Okay, I, I thought maybe rook f7, and then if king g6, you start pushing the pawn. But that probably wouldn't work, because if white loses his knight, there's knight f3 and rook c1. Yeah, in fact, even yeah. this kind of stuff is looking very uh, scary. Right. Although, you know, your your plan is interesting, because you take the knight, then white gets that queen. So Oh, and apparently Drew Jr. is beating Andrew Tang. Thank you, chat. She's beating Andrew Tang. Where is um, that? Or at least according to chat. We need we need to see if, if they're right. I don't even see that game right now. I mean, yeah, I, I I'm also missing that game. <laughs> I think the game's over. The game over? But we should have seen it if it was over. So she beat the penguin, but I still, I don't see it, so... Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna just ask real quick. She won already. Okay, weird. I I didn't see the game finishing, but we'll we'll check and we can see what's happening until then. Yep. Um, um. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's okay. Well. It's just gone. She won. Too good. Too strong. Good job. Strong player. So, where do we go from here? So, we can stay on this game. I'll keep an eye out on this game. Well, we can see what happened in the Sean Nagel and Conrad game since we were looking at that pretty closely. Oh, and it's craziness. Both sides of pass pawns. It's been craziness the entire game. Yeah. Um, and when I see craziness like this, either it's completely winning or it's just completely dead equal. Right? That's how engines work these days. There's like, right. there's no middle ground. Not, this is not going to be like. You know, I say level. It's a good word to use because how you don't look at this position and say it's equal, although no, no. maybe the engine doesn't, which is crazy. But rook c8. So the knights are stuck protecting each other. Right. The bishop on d7 is very well placed, protecting h3. Ooh, okay. So he's so bishop allowing... The bishop takes b5. I guess he doesn't bishop c6. Want to... Game over. Right. Yikes. Bishop b7. Mm. Or maybe there's a better knight b5 is an option. No, knight b5, then rook takes c6 happens. And the e4. So knight b5. E4 knight drops. Check yeah. here. You can even just take this in c6. Takes and then take it back and you're cover the queen e square. So king h Right. Now he can play knight b5 since bishop takes e4 isn't a threat anymore. Knight b5 looks excellent. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, that means probably instead of king h2, knight takes d6 was an option as well. Mm -hmm. Just thinking tactically, because if the king took, then knight b5 was a check, picking up the rook. But okay. Those tactic this little minutia. So it's two and a half and there it two, is. two and a half Dallas Destiny. Take Minnesota. on c6. Okay. Wait, wait a second. This is getting crazy. Again. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't. I think he was just winning, but he decided to take on d6 yeah. instead of playing knight b5, which definitely was a huge mistake. I mean. So now what you need to do is play bishop b7, I guess, and just try to take off this pawn. Bishop b7, d6 is coming. Right. Rook a2 check. Now the rook has gotten uh -oh, into bishop. the back rank, so he's, oof. That's, <laughs> now white has to be on the defensive yep. here. Bishop yeah, c6. It seems like he missed his chance. Unfortunately. Oh, he lost in time. Oh. <laughs> he lost oof. in time. That's awful. Nagel. Nagel. He forfeited the first game by not connecting, and then he lost on time. Didn't he win by forfeit the first game? Oh, he won by forfeit? Okay. I think so. So it, it makes up for each other then. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Minnesota Blizzard had an extra point in the first game. Wow. And he could have played this move rook to d2, it looks like, because the knight is pinned on e4. So rook d2 hit the bishop on d3, mm -hmm. and then probably would have won this pawn on d6. So... Wow, that is a crazy turn of events. Fidel Corrales lost to Cameron Wheeler. How did that happen? That's surprising. I flipped this board because we were looking at this game and White was much better. 
Oh, he, he was able to use some type of... We were talking a lot about the knight f3 and rook g1 threat, but oh. somehow he got a queen and he used that instead, which is quite the upgrade. I see how he blundered this. He went rook e5 on move 45, thinking that, okay, I'm going to get a queen with check on e8, missing knight f3 oh. track in between move. Now yeah. for king f1, take on e5 with the rook, which also covers the queening square, and then once the capture back, queen and check and mate. That's pretty unfortunate. But it's a nice tactic. Yep. It's a nice tactic if you guys are trying to figure out why is rookie five a blunder. Yeah, that's Ugh. just that's heartbreaking stuff for Fidel Corrales. Just you know, he, yeah. He definitely I mean blunders here. are always heartbreaking. Yep. That's it's just sad. I don't know what else to say. So let's go on to other games that are still in action. We have Yeah, let's check out some games that are very close to ending uh, because of the time pressure. Yeah, I pulled up the game between LOL Cats versus Anton Smirnov. Yep, same page there. Okay, so Smirnov with the black pieces, very strong grandmaster. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's going on? He's up a piece. Yeah, he's he is up a piece, <laughs> and uh, Rook H3 doesn't seem to be doing anything because, well, one, it's not his turn, but he'll never get that move in. Yeah, so I think this game is pretty much over. Black is up a full yeah. piece. And there's no checkmate happening, so looks pretty hopeless. Let's see. Which other games? Um, checking out Serana's game. Okay, let's check out... So, Jero.95 and Mishanik. Mishanik, let's see. Mishanik, yeah, exactly. Alikan Irgaliev versus Alexei Serana. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. White is down a pawn. But White's king feels much safer tucked in the corner. Right. Although, if you're not checkmating black anytime soon, which I don't think you are, queen a5. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, so Great white move. can play bishop e4. But then the queen should happen to the a pawn rolls. Yeah, exactly. But the other option, rook d1, lead allows things like rook d8 to continue and put pressure on that bishop. Yep, that's brutal. So it just doesn't seem like what white has a better option than trading queens here. No, you're right in this sad reality, which means that it, I guess black was ahead the whole time as I go through the moves. Just right. took a pawn on d5, and then queen mm -hmm. a5 comes into the action, pinning the bishop. He played bishop before. Queen trade happens, a5, mm -hmm. as mentioned, and this pawn is starting to get very close to the queening square. Hmm. So it looks, looks very nice here for Alexei Serrano. Very, very nice. Yeah. Well, we looked at two games from the Kangaroos. Both of them were really nice so far. Um, and there's another two games left between them that we didn't see yet. Yep. Okay, so let's check it out. Who's Which game? Moulton and Mikulevsky, I see. Yeah, so I'm taking a look here. Moulton Lee and Victor Mikulevsky. Okay. Ugly pawn structure for black. Nice mm -hmm. bishop on c Nice is an understatement for that bishop on The c bishop on c3 paired with a rook on the seventh. Oof, dream team. Almost, you know. Oh, it's almost game over. If this knight could kind of plunk itself on f6, that would just be game, set, match. So I want us to figure out a way how to get there. And the right. only squares I see are g4 to f6 or d7 to f6 because I don't mm -hmm. see how I'm getting e4 anytime soon. Yeah. Um... I mean, the other option is just grabbing the double pawns on the A file. But I, because it, it is too really hard to move that knight. He can try to maneuver knight F1, knight G3, but that does nothing. Right. I like your idea. Why don't I just take the pawn on A7? Yeah. Because very importantly, after rook H2, mm -hmm. I can probably just take this pawn okay. on A6. So he's grabbing pawns. That's good. I like, I approve. Yeah, you're, you're a little pawn grabber over here, even though you're a mechanics yeah. fan. Actually, most of the times when I've suggested pawn grabbings, players did it, so I feel pretty happy about that prediction. <laughs> you know how to be greedy and the players... And uh, so do the players. Yeah. We're, we're on the same boat there. It's important to note that this king has the e2 score and there's no bishop c4 check because this rook on a6 would be in the same diagonal as the king, but the knight on d2 covers that very important square. So what I see here is this h-pawn will try to work its way down the board, but you can't mm -hmm. move it quite yet. You lose g6. That's a big problem. Right. 
Six. So that's why he's playing king f7 to try and defend it, but... Uh, rook f6 check. It just seems like, yeah, it seems like the king can't get very far because of the rook and bishop combination here. Yep. I mean, rook f6 ah. check was very tempting. Okay, rook a5. Which also makes sense. Maybe he's thinking about going rook e5. Uh, yeah. And putting pressure on e4 to just grab another pawn. Although, white can defend it with king e6. Couldn't... Oh, but then you take on e4. Bishop takes and rook e5 check. Ah, nice tactic there. Yeah. Very nice tactic. So, he's just doing the pawn grabbing strategy. It's an end game. Pawns. More pawns equals easier win most of the time. Yeah, well, rook a5, I guess, is a really good move now Now with his knight takes e4 plan. But rook f6 right. check also won that pawn. Because if you're on king e8, then knight takes e4 happened. Same idea that you just mm -hmm. gave me. And if king to e7 then rook f4 comes, and I think you're just winning this pawn on e4 by force. Right. So it looks like both options were good moves. Rook a5, I guess, is a little bit safer. Oh, look at this. Ignoring Nancy the pawn. Four, I like it. He's bringing all of his pieces to the party here. Yep. No knight left behind. Uh, he can grab pawns, but he's just creating serious problems for black here. Yeah, where's that? And no time for Mikulevsky either. Three, yeah. two, one. I think he's going to... Oof. You mean oh, with point he, he five saved seconds it. Left. He saved it. Okay. So, well, he went on the same fa rank as his bishop, which... Makes, means you want to play rook a6? Yeah, I mean, rook a6, I don't know if it's winning, but obviously it's the first thing white would look at here. Yep. And then after, let's see, rook a6, king d7 mm -hmm. runs into to knight e5 check. Right. King. king d5 looks like he's... Might get made in the center, but not yet. So it's close. Yeah, maybe king e5 actually works. King, so king d5, but if you go king d5. Which is what he did. Knight e5, okay, played. Mm -hmm. So you can't go bishop b5 because rook oh, a5. Oh, and he flags yeah, he, too hard of a position. Yeah, you can't play this position with no time on your clock. I mean, his king's almost getting mated. If you play bishop yeah. b5, rook a5 comes, and you can't protect this bishop on b5 anymore. It's pinned to the king. So. Nikolevsky just had no time to calculate this kind of stuff. Yeah. Oof. All right. So Kangaroos. That... They're <laughs> very strong this match so far. Kangaroos. So the let's see. The Kangaroos were near. No, the Kangaroos were leading at some point, and now they're fourth, but they still have a very good chance to make the playoffs, and they're showing that yeah. they, they really want it. Three and a half out of four against the Sluggers. Well, Hikaru, yeah. we saw you in the chat before. Maybe you should have played this week because their team needs you. And yeah, where'd you go, Hikaru? That's okay. Is I it guess okay, he has though? a life outside of Pro Chess League. Oh, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. I pulled up the game between Lidi and mm -hmm. Altaj Safarli. Okay. And the Shangdu board three is playing the San Jose Hacker board two. And it looks great for the Chinese player because... I mean, look at the queen on G3. Oh, he has a terrible username. Uh, w, whoa. Okay. X, w, w, Z, 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 Z. But that's a... I, I was just a little angry looking at it. But anyway. I'm not angry looking at his position. because That's fair. So he compensates with the beautiful position here. Yep. Take. Do you just take that rook there? It looks. And then take on G5. Take just on G5. Take the and then take on A7 at the end of this. You're going up a pawn. Yeah. And Saverly kind of had to do this, is that pawn would have went to d7 next, and that mm -hmm. would have been overwhelming. So offering the queen trade. Note that the queen was pinned to the king. You would have loved to take on e5, but there was a pin down the g file. And now mm -hmm. rook takes a7. Maybe there's a better like move to play first, like bishop d3 check. I could see that being a right. good move. Because then yeah. maybe you put your bishop on e4 and just centralize. Um, okay, That's I would true. just take on a7. And Nope. I just mouse slip my rook to b7. Don't do that. Take that pawn on a7. Free pawn. Hmm. Skull Advance says, this is the first time watching one of these streams. Well, that's awesome to hear. Hopefully, you're getting a little bit more into chess as a result. Yeah, and Alexandra, Shea Doc said, Robert and Botes stream a robo stream. That's a good name. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think we can run with it. Um so white continued with bishop b5 because if he gets his pawn to a4 then he's forever protecting that pawn and the bishop or at least until the knight kicks it out but b6 is going to be a problem for black to defend yep and his knight is going to have a longer time trying to get out knight b3 knight c5 
And if I'm white here, I would think I'm playing king g3, pawn f4, mm -hmm. try to trade off one of my double pawns, and then, you know, then try to create another pass pawn. Because the, what if f4 and he just pushes e4? Right, so let's say I go king g3, you play, yeah. which is a waste of move, rook d6. I sure. play f4, you play e4. Then mm -hmm. have to, I play f3, right? I have two f pawns. Yep. So I'm just going to make progress that way. So that that's nice. That's a way that white can tr force black to trade off one of his doubled pawns. And that's a technique you can see also in a lot of other positions. Yeah, and, and especially in the end game, right? I can't create mm -hmm. a pass pawn. Essentially, it's a two-on-two two right now, even though I have three pawns. And a pass pawn can only be made if I remove one of black's pawns. The way to do that is not by playing f4 immediately, because after pawn right. f4, pawn f4, granted, white's position is still very good. You're up a pawn. This pawn's cemented on a light square on f5. I have a light square bishop. Those uh, nuances really help white, of course. But you can't create a pass pawn, let's say the rooks were traded, because your pawn is blockaded by just the one pawn. The f5 pawn covers the two white pawns on that side of the board. Mm-hmm. So yeah, looking very promising here. Okay, well. I, I love let's... this comment by a Knight Oss, so an Australia fan, clearly. The one-two punch of Serrano Smirnov is second to none. I'm pretty sure it's second to, let's say, Shanklin, Negi, Neroditsky, but we can pretend. Well, Negi's punch, I, I, I think Negi is great, but that last game was disappointing to see the draw. You haven't forgiven him yet? How do you do in the second game? Is he still, he's... Well, let, let's take a look, because he has a minute against Keaton, who has five. So I'm hoping I'm going to go there, and uh -oh. he has a minute, because he's been thinking about how to get a brilliancy. Um, oh, it's a very complicated position. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not quite what I was hoping for. Because both sides are kind of pinned here, right? White, mm -hmm. excuse me, Black can't take on f4, because you lose the knight on e6. But similarly, White has a hard time taking on, uh, on e5, so let's say black plays, I don't know, king h7. Okay. Then there's, if pawn e5, I think there's rook takes f3 as an opportunity here. Because after rook f3, I have knight d4 with a fork. Right. So both sides are at a kind of a standoff here, figuring out who's going to blink first, who's going to take, and when. Yep. Who's biting the bullet and opening up the position? Um, and what I like about this is that both sides are preparing for some type of opening black has his rook double his rooks doubled on the f file while white has both of his rooks on e and f his queen on e2 they're preparing for it but who is better prepared here it's a good question and i'm just looking at commissioner greg saying maybe the carwana and so one two punch not too bad yeah that's probably yeah. you can't really possibly get better than that unless you have magnus carlson and i don't know dingley wren but that the only matchup in terms of rating, is Ding Li Ren and Yu Yang Yi for Shang Du. And it's Yu right. Yang Yi who's playing today, not Ding Li Ren, for the record. Yeah, if, if Ding Li Ren was playing, I'm sure we would have looked at his games already. Yeah. Um, well, th that might be the cue to go look over for uh, Yu Yang Yi's game. Where is yeah. this game, though? So I found Li Chao, not a bad board two at 2708, playing Christopher Yu. So mm -hmm. maybe we have to stick here for a second. Yeah, we got to check on our homeboy, Christopher I'm sorry to say his position looks absolutely terrible. I I can't disagree. I mean, there's a pass pawn on C3. Protected pass pawn on C3. Protected pass. Well, protected but under pressure. Well, some people like under pressure. It's a very good song. So. I like queen, so we can agree there. <laughs> and, I mean, the now rook c at A8 just made, yeah. means you have to play A4, otherwise you lose the pawn. Yeah, and now he can't put any more pressure on b4, which is just miserable, actually. Oh, my gosh, the knight's coming to d4. Or c5, oh. right? If or can, c5, you're right. There's a lot of good options. Okay. Rook Bishop c5 can also happen. What if I just go knight? If knight c5, you're going to play knight c1 and just try to, like, oh, nice move, h5. That bishop's coming to h6. Yes. Or, oh. or not. Just kidding. I mean, that was a, a tease. You see h5, you think bishop h6. But bishop c5 was also a good move. We looked at it a little bit before. I don't like what Li Chao is doing here because now the e5 pawn's hanging. This rook will situate itself behind the b pawn. Okay, rook a5 is a good move to protect e5 and stop rook mm -hmm. to b5. My point was that rook b5 was coming after the b4 pawn, the base pawn of this little chain here. But right. rook a5 stops that in, in his tracks. Though, and Christopher Yu has 20 seconds. Yeah, that's not good. When you see it's, past pawns like this, even if objectively it's okay for white, which I don't think it is, 
and it no would be time. really hard to find a plan. You'd need a lot of time here. Yeah, rook c5 comes to mind, so I can play c2 next yeah. and knight d4. Knight c5, right. forcing the knight to c1. But knight c5. Yeah, the, the knight wants to probably go to c1 at some point anyway, since it's the best way to block it. Yep. Rook d6. Okay. So now it's trying to go to b6. Okay, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, he's getting counterplay because if, uh, you know, rook c5 trying to go with c2, you can always stop with knight c1. Right. Then go rook b6 and try to take it. Yeah. Oh, if Christopher Yu pulled off anything here, I mean, I thought I couldn't be a bigger fan, but <laughs> that would make me a bigger fan. Yeah, I can't. 15 seconds to pull off something here. I, I want it to happen. It, that would be amazing. But anyway. What is Yu Yang Yi's username? Where is that guy? There he is. Yu... Chess Panda one two three. I pulled up his. There game. we go. Of he's course, playing... he got the chess panda. Wait, who's Soggy Cheese? Is, just a... is that Vinesh Ravuri? Vinesh, yeah, he's what? been playing super well. And he needs a name change because he just says Soggy Cheese. Um, I think he's always been Soggy Cheese because it was just such a disturbing name. I remembered it. Yeah, that mm. needs to. Yeah, I mean, he's, okay, he's been performing 200 points over his rating, Un which is good. Unfortunately, Yu Yangi is 715 points above his rating, so... Yeah, he, he, you know, he needs to do some uh, fuzzy accounting to, to have something here as well. Yep. His position doesn't look good, though. Um, even though Black's King is on E7... Yeah, but there's a piece that's hanging on C3 right now. So And the knight, yeah. the rook's hanging on G3. So he took, yeah. <laughs> took the knight because the free knight instead of taking the exchange. Right. But this is an extra piece. Okay, we can get off this game. Where's Christopher Yu? One second he made his last move in. Oh, no. Oh, We turned away okay. and he's lost because now there are two It's because we left. He, he, I needed to be here as his biggest fan, and I wasn't. Uh, rook G2 check will always be able to go to A2, so you can play H2 here safely. Mm -hmm. And just throw your rook behind the a pawn, and then we'll look in a yeah. second how this happened because now I remember. Oh, yeah, no, no time. Okay, um, he should resign any second now. C two, yep. then H two, then H one, or maybe H two first. There's just too many pass pawns to yeah. stop. H2. I mean, two is too many, so. H1 equals queen, and resignation will follow. Yeah. Or not. Now it's time to resign. Still playing. Li Chao is we 11 should play, minutes We should left. play guess the resignation. Oh, we would have both lost. No, he resigned and lost on time. Okay. At the same time. So, okay, let's yep. see what happened. I, I, we left. Let me know what move you're going back to. Okay, I'm going back to move 37. Mm -hmm. So king f8 was played. Yep. Rook uh, d6, and after knight f4, took on f4, but that just traded into mm -hmm. an end game where all of a sudden the black pawn f4 was very valuable. I guess knight c1 or pawn g3 mm -hmm. were options instead of knight yeah. takes f4. Just to I always I always like knight c1. Yeah, just it's you're keeping the knight on the board, which can then you can kick the black knight out with g3 and then play knight d3 yourself or knight a2 right. and maybe come after this uh, b pawn. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a great idea. Knight d3, putting pressure on b4 while also helping protect against c1. But he took on f4, and I think what he missed is this rook g5 move, which hits the mm -hmm. pawn on g2, and now he's having trouble defending both sides of the board over here because this rook can always swing back to c5 behind the passed pawn. And right. So g3 is a sad move to have to play. Yeah, I mean, if, if, he, if he missed rook g5 and black would have played something like king e7 then he was probably feeling pretty good because he gets his rook on c6, which is the best way to be defending. But Yeah, on c6 or b6, one of these squares that hit the pawns yeah. over there to be active. But instead he yeah. he moved his king over and, well, trouble ensued. In fact, he, he had to play king e2 because we played rook b6 immediately. Um, there's definitely trouble on with rook c5 and c2 and c1 equals queen. So you can't put your rook behind the b pawn with your king mm -hmm. so far away. So that's a good... Oh my gosh, Negi Drew! Wow, you really sounded like heartbroken there. He drew Keaton Kira with, from the white pieces. Okay, that Second game was pretty time. level when we saw it earlier. It was, it was, but you know, yeah, I'm he, sorry. this is the second second upset. Look but at, okay, look at Mama Jarg's game, by the way. 
And his teammates are doing great. Okay. I'm going to his game. Because Mama Jarov is playing a 1900 yes. and is not winning. Oh, okay. How is this possible? In fact, this is a forced draw. Knight takes e4 now, and then white can never lose. You go knight e4 and then rook g8, and you get a, you're threatening to get a queen. There's no way yep. to lose that. Yeah. Is he going to do it? I don't know. He yes! Yeah. Or he's gonna go, Jandy. He's going to play rook g4 check and then take the bishop on d4. That's what he's going to do instead. So instead of rook g8, so king e4, rook g4, king moves, take the bishop, and then bring your king in and get a new queen. And then the rook has to sacrifice. Is this the yeah. biggest upset in pro chess league history? Is this rating accurate? Is he actually 1900? Yeah, I, we got to check on that. There's no way this guy is 1900. Uh, hold up. <laughs> like, maybe just super underrated? Yeah, I'm going to take a quick look. It says 1966. Yeah, and he's lost all of the games he's played so far. That's crazy. He's, zero, he's 0 okay. and 4. He's also like 11 years old. <laughs> I just looked okay. at him on Okay. He is, this is he, just getting more and more fun, but why? Yeah, he, he's just going to get a queen. And, and what because O1 says, welcome to China, where 1900s or 2500 strength. Honestly, I've heard that for many years about the Chinese chess league. If you're a strong player, they love for you to come, and you never want to go because they are just going to steal your rating points. You play all these, like, if you're a GM and you're playing all these 2100s, they just take you out. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're this was his his first win of the league at not sorry draw, but you know it's basically a win because Maui Darov, nicely done, Jiang Di. That was awesome. Yeah. That was really awesome. I mean, you don't see that every day, but last week Grant Shu won, drew some nice games against Carwana right. Wesley So, and this week we have Zhang Di with the white pieces drawing Shakri Mama Jarov. That is. That's crazy, but it happens. This is chess. You know, you, you, Mama Jarva will win 99 out of the 100 games they play, but this was the one draw. Yeah, and it, it happens. Um, so we can't be too critical of him either. I, I'm just, let's see, are there, actually, let me see if there's games in time pressure. All right, you tell me where. Oh, we were looking earlier at the game between, um, Safarli and Lee D. So maybe we can take a quick look there since they're the furthest down okay. from any of the furthest along, sorry. Still looks good for Lee D. Mm hmm He didn't do your idea yet of trading off yeah. the pawns, but it's because Safarli stopped him. He went F4 himself. Oh right. Good point. Yeah, which is actually a very nice defensive resource in a sense, but Alexandra, black has no moves. The knight on b7 can't move because b6 is hanging behind, uh, behind it. Right. So black's going to shuffle and going to hope that white can't do anything to improve because if you move your bishop away from b5, then knight c5 comes and attacks the a4 pawn. So ideally, white can keep this bishop on b5 and do something to kick this knight out. So the king will try to go e2, d3 to e4, something like well, that. Well, he... The, so does rook c1 do anything? Because obviously if king g2, he just comes back. Right. Um, but no, he can probably just go king e2, so. Yeah, Although, I don't think it works. Where's the king going to go? Because it can't really go to d3 as then knight c5 check happens. So the king sort of runs out of squares. Right? Like, yeah, we're... It's mm -hmm. not easy to see how white is going to make progress. Perhaps at some point you play rook g8 check, and then you take this pawn on f4. I know I've been saying you don't want to have to take on f4, but if I go rook g8... And then rook f8 check, and then take this pawn on f4. Then my king has the d4 square once it gets to d3 to start running right. the board. So that's uh, I know that's a lot to sort of take in, but it's a possibility. No, I, I just think this it's a pretty challenging end game for white here. Yep. But yeah, if he can't do anything to push here, he's going to have to simplify or turn the position into something else, create another weakness, and the pawn on f4 could be that. Although, oh, wait, 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 wait. What's happening? Is this... Oh. So Farley, I hope his oh, internet disconnected. is not bad. It says member offline. Oh, boy. He's going to lose by disconnection and forfeit. Come on. It's, it's over, I'm telling you. One, two, and... Yeah. It says nothing yet. There it is. Lady wins on time because of a disconnection. 
I don't know where South Harley is playing from, but get that man some better internet. I don't think this is a rage quit. Nuh uh. He was going to fight this position on. Oof. Crazy talk. So, where do we go from here? Because this game is officially over in favor of Lee D. Yep. Yikes. Um, let's see. And we're being told South Harley is playing in Iran right now. So. A tournament and the connection is rough there. Yeah. Not good. Uh, the game with uh, Armakiba, Molten, Sargisian, yep. and Molten Lee is interesting. Okay, let me pull that up. Got it. Whoa, it looks like White's just missing an H pawn. Right. But that H pawn was where Black's F pawn was. I'm just. Yeah, so that, that trade is weird. I'm going to go back, yeah. see how it happened. On move uh, 12, Black took on G5. White took with a pawn and then played F6. So the trade happened. The H4 pawn took on G5 and then hmm. took okay. on uh, F6. Yeah, that H pawn traveled quite a bit there. But I, White probably didn't want an H pawn there because he wants to play Rook H1. So at the same time, he's weakening his king, but he's also creating better chances for an attack. I love White's position. The one thing you don't like is this pawn in the C4, the double pawns, because this knight goes to C6, it goes to A5, mm -hmm. it annoys this pawn on the uh, C4 square. But you love the rook H1 ideas. I would play rook H1 right now, and then I guess black will try queen F5, but then you have E4 with tempo. Mm -hmm. You have a humongous center. You do, but by getting that huge center, you're also weakening F3. Yeah, you're not wrong. But um, I'm just saying... Okay, again, I'm, it's still tempting, though. No. I'm just the bright side. I only see the optimism in the position. I mean, black also has e5, which would help him get his knight in. But I guess e5, d4. Well, obviously not here because he's going to get mated, but yeah. later on. Yeah, so the question is, is black going you know, to play queen g6 even? Just offer a queen trade there? Because if, mm -hmm. if you're queen g6 and we trade on g6, you're going to have a hard time protecting c4 once knight a5 comes. Right. So that's, um, that's going to be interesting. I, also... The game between Andrew Tang and Zhou Jianchao is okay. furthest along. They both have four minutes. Zhou Jianchao is trying to get an attack here. He's down a pawn. Yep. And his bishop on c8 looks like a French bishop, which means he must That's be dead lost. That's not a good thing. Um, no, his position looks I'm... terrible. Because you, you'd love to get an attack for black, right? Like Right, you, you'd love F5 to, to be powerful here. So like F5, G4, really quick pushes mm -hmm. on the king side. Well, really what yeah. you'd like is to play G4 and allow your bishop to attack over your pawn on E6. So if the bishop was an F5, we just could imagine that bishop went F5, then G4 is very powerful, just trying yep. to break open the position. But mm -hmm. because that's not a legal move, bishop C8 to um, F5, I think white is doing extremely well. As if you go G4, then I can even probably just take on c6 and then take on e5 in some order and then the g4 pawn will be lost. But maybe there's something even better. So g4 is the real tempting option. I guess I can just take on g4, honestly. You're not going to attack mm -hmm. me with one piece. And if you move your knight to take my pawn g4, my bishop slides into d6 and white should be very happy in a position like this. But if you're um, Zhao Jianchao, Jinxiao Zhao, you have to. Like, you're in a bad position. Yeah. You need to do something active. You don't want to just get crushed slowly, so might as well take your chances and go for the kingside attack, which he just did, as we said, f5, because nothing else is going to give him a winning or even drawing a chance that he's able to simplify it later on here. Yeah, he's going to be playing wishful chess from now on, hoping that his attack can break through. But if Andrew Tang is careful, which I think he will be, I think that he is going to go on to win a smooth game just because the attack doesn't look legitimate quite yet. Right. So, okay. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at... I, was, I see Nagel is playing against Cameron Wheeler. That yep, I was looking long. at that as well. Okay, that pawn on c6 looks like a pretty big target there. Yep. This is definitely much harder to play for black... So do you play knight d8 and get ultra passive? It just looks disgusting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's also bishop d5 after that. I don't think it does much. Yeah, but bishop d5, I can just move my rook. Okay, so c5. He went c5? Yep. 
And That's... this is going to be an issue because now White's Rook can get behind those pawns on the fifth rank and weaken them even further, or Bishop d5. But yeah, Rook f6, good response. Getting out of the pin, now the Knight's coming to d4 if you're not careful. In fact, Knight d4 was a better move because Knight d4... If you take on f7, knight e2 check comes, and I win your rook on c1. Oh, that's true. Potentially he missed that. Yeah, that would have been a nice way to keep that knight on the board. And rook e1, so e7 is mm -hmm. an issue. Do, can I play king f7 here? I don't want to put my king in a pin, but can I is a different story than should I. And I don't love it, so I'm going to... Right. Um... If I move my knight, aren't you just taking e7? Yeah, you can't move the knight because e7 hangs. Well, maybe I have knight... No. Knight g5 doesn't work. Knight c7, I guess? Coming after your bishop? No, that can't work. Right. Bishop b7 there, and I, I lose my knight on c7 immediately. So I blundered. I admit it. I suggested a move that was absolutely terrible. Forgive me. I mean, it's not, it's not easy to suggest a good move here. Um, I have an idea. So I wanted to go rook d8, Alexandra. But the problem with the rook yeah. d8 is bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, saying, oh, both of your rooks are under attack, but then mm -hmm. your rook takes d8 with check. Right, that's the big problem. There. Right. But if I go rook c7... Rook c7, yeah, go on the other spot where you can attack the rook. That makes sense. Yeah, so bishop e6, now I have rook takes e6, and now both of the rooks, all the rooks, I should say, are under attack here. And if you go rook d8 check now, I have king f7 defending my rook on e6. There you go. So rook c7 looks like a nice defensive move. I don't really see other moves. I'm very worried about moving my knight and losing this pawn over there on e7. So rook c7 looks like a very nice defensive resource by Nagel. Okay, well, let's see if he finds it. Um, ooh. No, king f7 can't be good. Rook b7 for starters, because rook b7 attacks b5 and also puts pressure on this pin. Right. Um, so let's say he plays rook b7, b4. Then rook b6, and yikes. Yeah, just rook b6 maneuvering for the pin, and black just lost a piece. Yep. So he doesn't even want to play b4. Maybe he's he has to try rook d8 after that. So rook b7, yeah, rook d8. That's a good mm -hmm. defensive try. Hoping that if we start trading pieces, but maybe rook e5 there. And just keeping that bishop protected. Okay, rook b6. Keeping the pressure on, yeah. Yeah, rook b6, you'll have rook d6, which is the nice uh, yeah. safety measure for Nagel. But yeah, you're just keeping this pressure alive. Your rook can come to b5. You go b4 and just start attacking all these pawns here. Something like that. Right. He's probably going to grab at least one more pawn in this position. So even if black can figure out a way to hang on to the knight, it's. Yeah. A bad endgame here. Yep. So it's looking real tough for Nagel. I had king f7. He missed rook c7 as an option. But uh, he'll, still a lot to prove for Cameron Wheeler, who played well uh, to win against Corrales. Well, that was a very mm -hmm. iffy game, honestly. He looked like he was in big trouble at a certain moment, but then he overpowered him with that rook e5 knight f3 check thing that uh, won him that game. He allowed him to promote. So um, Cameron Wheeler looks like he's in good shape. Yes, and I'm just looking through the other games to see if there's any other one we should look at. It seems like Andrew Tang is doing a good job holding the position. Black hasn't managed to get an attack there. Yeah, Black got the opposite of an attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can Black move? Like, Bishop C7, does that win the Bishop on D7? I mean, what's your rook doing on A7? Just, like, every piece is bad. Bishop C7 simply wins this rook on D8 because... Have you moved your rook uh, away? It's another one of those positions, just like we saw in the Sam Shanklin game in the first round. Yeah. So everything's bad. Tang's doing real well right now. Yeah. Did he, um, how did he do in... I don't remember how he did in the first game. Well, oh, Andrew Tra Tang has half a point so far. Oh, so not, not doing that good. Not, not too good, no. Okay. Well, he'll... He's doing better now that he's going to win this game over a very strong Exactly, round. exactly. Um, and I'm just looking up to see what his performance has been so far during the league. Um, he's perform He's been performing about 2,600, so that's obviously good. Um, hold up. There's 
talk right now behind the scenes here about Safar Lee's internet because he lost that game earlier because he did not have a connection. And I think the managers of San Jose are asking if he can be switched out for another player. And we'll see what Commissioner Greg Shadi is. Commissioner Greg, yeah. This well, is... we're all focused on the commentary here, Greg. You can focus on the rules. Yeah, he does He does everything behind the scenes. and as yeah, a bad We're star... just the talking heads. <laughs> we literally are talking heads on this one. Yeah, exactly. But that is big news. We'll see as this develops here. I feel like a reporter all of a sudden. We'll see if this, how this develops, and we'll get back to you with more updates. But seriously, you know, Safar Ali is nearly 2,700, and if he can't play anymore, I don't know who they're uh, yeah. taking it out for. But also, if he can play, will his internet actually survive long enough to allow him to compete over the chessboard? So we'll, we'll... It doesn't seem like it's the case. Um, and San Jose Hackers, they are in fifth place, so they're really desperately trying to get in the top four. That would be a crushing blow for them. Yep, and someone just said, I had Safar Lee in my fantasy team. <laughs> Aw, what, because, well, you know, Go get him some like Amazon Fire or whatever helps you connect with the Wi-Fi. I definitely did not pick Safar Lee, not because he's not a great player, but because Shangdu has two 2,700 pluses on their top two boards. And I'm sorry, I just can't trust anybody to do super well against that lineup. That's, that's fair. Oh, okay, so Nagy is playing against Alexei Driev. Ooh, that's going to be a good match. Let's check that's, that out. There's a lot of things Whoa. happening on this board. There's a rook on e4. Wait, isn't white uh, up a piece right now? For how many pawns? Three pawns? Okay, we got to... Yeah, let's figure out what's <laughs> going on here. But first, got to count. So three pawns. Okay. So seven pawns for black, four for white. But mm -hmm. white is an extra piece. Now, yep. that dynamic is very interesting, particularly in an endgame when the pawns can start rolling up the board. And, for example, if black is able to get e5, f5, e4 in, that's asking for a lot. But if that yeah. is possible, then black will be very happy because that bishop on g2 will have less space to work with and things like that. So rook to e1 was played. And if you're black here, do you put your rook on d3 to protect the knight on c3 as well as keep this... Um, kind of discovery ideas the bishop on the long diagonal live or you got to figure out the right way to play this i th think rook d3 is okay it also allows me to double rooks but i mean it does look really tempting what could white possibly reply here oh. his knight on a3 is really misplaced yes so, um so can i he played b6 i was gonna yeah. say can i play b5 actually i was about to ask that question like can i go b5 and say you can't take on c3 because my, when my bishop takes, I hit both of your rooks. Mm -hmm. And then I can play b4 and maybe start advancing my pawns. Instead, yeah. what Negi did is a solid approach, keeping his queen side intact, keeping a nice pawn yep. chain there, protecting his pawn c5, which is the most vulnerable pawn in the, that it was available in the position. And now right. knight b4, Alexandra, looks very interesting in double edge. Because once you go knight b4, the knight's coming to d3 or c2. It's yeah, looking very interesting. Yep. I like knight before a lot, actually. I, yeah, I do, do, I do as well. Um, his pieces are super active here, even though he has less pieces than white. It seems like yeah. they're... I guess I'm second-guessing myself, because knight before did hang the e7 pawn. But who knows? You know, Something like knight before, rook e7, if there's some b5 stuff, kicking this knight, opening up lines with his bishop on b2 hanging. Very well, it does seem like Nagy was afraid of rook takes e7 since he just played knight d5. Yeah. Um, he is gonna. He is offering the bishop trade. Yep. Which, I mean, obviously white's bishop is strong as well, but then white is gonna get control over the e5 square. So he white just took right away. Um, knight e5. Which knight? The the knight on the third rank to e5. Looks like an interesting move, because if Negi takes and White takes with the rook, then he's putting pressure on the knight and the pawn on e7. Yep, and yeah, you're good. You know, it's good to have options. You can take it with the rook, like you just said, hitting knight, and then Black will have to play e6. But it does feel like White is making a little bit of headway here. Some ideas with a4, a5, or just to play a little bit more slowly with the rook are available. And after a knight trade on e5 as well, you can take it with the knight and try to aim for the c6 square. Yep. So we have knight e5. Is a has to be a good move here. Another move I would consider is pawn to a3 just to stop a knight from coming to b4. 
we talked before, we talked B4 about knight coming to B4, but for wow. example, knight F to so E5, funny. there is some knight B4 stuff available, or knight D4, and my knight is aiming for the C2 square and creating counterplay. So. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, I see Zhuzhina lost her game. Oh, and Penguin won that game as expected. Oof. Zhuzhina got absolute. Oh, look at this move. 24. Knight takes h2 by Beardson. Beardson's such a boss. Knight takes h2. Bishop h2. Rook h2 check. And this is a big problem when you see a bishop on c5 covering mm -hmm. this. G1 square, and then you get a check on the H file. Only one thing to do is block, but after takes, takes bishop d6 check. It's a force mate. King g1 check and mate on h2. So that's a problem. That was a really nice one. I was watching it on, on Twitch since I had trouble finding the game, but... You're all good. You did point it out. So we have Shanklin versus Melikachian here and mm -hmm. that's another interesting game with Shanklin playing the Sicilian with the black pieces and mm -hmm. double edge position for sure because in this structure f6 and e6 are either you know pretty big weaknesses or black is doing totally fine then you have the two bishops and once your bishops get free in the position you're very mm -hmm. happy so I would think about playing rook hf1 here I think because the pawn on e6 is pinned to the bishop on d7 Okay. But then I think queen a4 comes in to protect that bishop. Now e takes d5 is a threat. e5 is another threat potentially to uh, move that pawn up the board. I don't know. These kind of positions are very confusing to me. I'm, I, I think they're confusing to most people unless they spent time preparing here. Yeah, knight f4. Uh, he just played knight f4, so he's just putting more pressure on e6. It's funny that e5 fork emote doesn't work because like you said, queen is just going to take on b7. Yep. Um, but that is a very it's, funny it's, it's just an interesting uh, pawn structure where most of the center pawns are still on the sixth rank. And you'd think that would make them less weak, but they all seem like they're going to be under attack here. Yeah. Because once, even if, if the knight wasn't on d4, then the rook is putting all the pressure on the d file. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can sometimes play, move your knight away and then just go after the d6 pawn. And there are a couple of tempting moves here for black because I really want to play e5. But if I go mm -hmm. f5, I don't think I'm in time to get my sort of e5 move in because you can just even take this pawn on e6 right away. So right. knight d takes e6. So f5 doesn't work. But somehow I need to protect this bishop and let myself play e5 because taking this pawn e6 seems very risky for white with this mm -hmm. pin to the queen on h3. So if I go... Rook h7, for example, and you try to take on e6, maybe I can work my way to take advantage of your pin, but I, with the pawn d6, as you mentioned, I don't think it's happening. So, not quite. Maybe queen, queen a4? No, that, that protects the bishop. But still the e6 pawn is hanging. Ah, oh, it's too complicated. It hurts to think about. I, I've been letting you do the heavy lifting here as I look for other games that might be a little further along and less complicated yeah, to let them do the thinking and simplifying. My here. head hurts looking at this. Cameron Wheeler won his game, by the way. He's doing yeah. And oh, we, and we thought Sean was maybe getting out of that tricky position, but okay. Yeah, he ended up going down in a, a rook end game where, okay, his king got actually very active. But mm -hmm. it was too little, too late, too late, too little, too wait. I said, uh, wait, but too late because Wheeler had so many pawns to work with. But I see right. Victor Mikulevsky playing his Raymond's song, and Raymond's song is 53 seconds, and the queen trade was just offered here yeah. by Song. So do you take it or do you let that keep the queens on the board? Right. So after queen takes, knight takes. Black is putting pressure on c6. He's threatening to take it. If wh wh White can defend either with rook d6 or rook c1. I like rook d6 because it keeps pressure to potentially get rook d8 check there. Yeah. So um, rook d7, I guess, is another option as well. But right. I don't know. Can Black try to play f6 and just tra start trading off the knights? Probably not because, yeah, that doesn't work. F6 doesn't work because rook e7, pawn e5, right. c7. Your idea. Just put the rook back on d7 and try to <laughs> give a check on the back rank. So so is this is this the 
best way for white to move forward here? Um, I don't know. I, I want to play queen b7 to allow right. you to take me, but I don't think I'm getting away with it. Black can always play f6 there. Uh, yeah. No, actually not there because the rook on c8 is hanging. I take it back. So, right, after after it's defended. Yeah, so queen c uh, And thank you, Nelly, for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Hey. For everybody who's been supporting the chess.com account and all of the good things happening as a result. We really appreciate it. Oh, wow. Okay, shout out to 4,000 of you guys if my viewer account is accurate. Whoa. Tons of viewers. I was about to make a joke, you know, a Nelly reference about a song, you know, but I didn't, didn't have anything in mind, so I figured I'd just let you know what I was thinking. Always good to, right. to see what a chess player is thinking, right? Yeah, Nelly, the this position is getting hot for Mikulevsky, maybe. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. I Raymond's see. trying to take off all the pieces. Oh, okay. I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> can't believe that you just happened. It. Yeah. I, I've kind of forced it to happen unintentionally, yeah. but it happens. Okay, yeah. queen d7 or queen b7, one of these moves feels right. Because when you're offered a tr an exchange of pieces, you want to do that in terms favorable to you. And we're talking right. about queen e7. It definitely looks good for white if a queen e7 put a rook on d7 and make progress. But he, he does take, and he plays c7 first, because his point is that if you take on c7, rook d8's checkmate. Now, yep. in the game... He went g6. Well, I don't understand why he didn't go knight d5 back and just gobble up the c7 pawn. Like, that looks just like... Was he just able to win the pawn? He was, because it's attacked twice. There's no more mate threats. Um, what in the world? Why? So g6 is... Yeah, this would have this would have saved his position. I mean, saved because he's slightly worse. Both of these players, I think, are missing things, but... Yeah, it's probably the, the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... How do I, and knight g4 looks really strong heading to f6. Mm -hmm. Because black is one move away from the king e8, and then f6, he's not going to find knight g4. I think knight g4 works. Instead, he takes this, and he's going to play knight d7, maybe? Okay, king f2, king e3, yeah. try to take this He's pawn. just going for the weak e4 pawn. But um, I, I'm still not convinced that knight, after uh, king f8, knight g4 wasn't really strong. Planting the knight on f6, because if the knight moves from e7, then a rook d8 check comes with real force. So I think that was a missed opportunity. Instead, he's getting this still better end game, but he's a lot left to prove here because, well, that pawn on c7, if that king darts over to the queen side, may just be able to capture it. I was just thinking one of your fans who loves your channel. Who? That was Jeffrey oh. Tsai. Thank you. Appreciate it, and I am going to be streaming more. I streamed a little bit on Friday, and we'll continue to stream. Uh, actually, Alexandra and I were talking about that just before the show. But for now, commentary, 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 commentary. Only commentary, yep. because... You're right. Um, okay, so uh, things have moved pretty pretty quickly. Raymond was able to get that C pawn that had been giving him so much trouble, but he is the more passive player in this position. Yep. He's defending here. Um, and it's one of those positions, Alexandra, where you like are really worried as black if you trade knights and you're too passive, yep. then you'll lose the king of pawn in game. So right, because you'll probably be down the tempo and you'll just be pushed out with some yeah. king maneuver here. So he wants to keep his knight and he has 20 seconds, so it's a pretty tough position. Um, oh yeah, I like knight knight d5 now because he can go to e3 and then one yep. if white's not careful yeah that's exactly what he's doing yeah if i can but knight he came back fast enough okay yeah but now if unless i could give you know my king into the gun of king to the position it's just going to mm -hmm. be a draw it's not it's not a fortress like you hear that term being used but there's no infiltration square so h6 here will be, right. might be met by knight h4 right that's why i have a king d7 see that these are the little nuances that you have to keep in mind anytime you move a pawn you make another pawn weak potentially and look at this knight g1 move which is very good because where your pieces, if you played h4 instead of knight g1, right? Then all of a sudden knight e4 comes or knight h1 even, and you lose his g3 pawn. Knight h1 is probably stronger, so he went knight g1 and then knight e2, and he eventually went h4, but only when his knight was protecting the g3 pawn. Right, he's covering all his bases here. Yeah, um, I, I think neither player is gonna trick the other here. Don't play knight f3 because then knight h1 comes. Okay, so in knight e2. There we go. Looks like they will just uh, yeah. have this game fizzle out soon. 
Hopefully no no more flagging here. We've seen enough today. Yeah. 92 back, and we'll just see a draw by... Mm -hmm. So, are we allowed to say this looks dryish? <laughs> yes. You've, you've been talking about positions being level the entire stream. I just want to... You can definitely say this looks dryish because, I mean, just... How do you make They've progress? been repeating this. Yeah, okay. I'm just check. joking, anyway. No, you're, um, you're right, though. It's, it's a good question. Here is definitely satisfies the uh, drawish. Okay, they've definitely repeated this position a number of times. King c4. Offer a draw. So we can go to another game. Come on. Yep. Um, and we can come back to the Shanklin and... Um, Whoa. Kachayan? Hachin? Hachin game. Melik There we go. Yeah, this is looking good for Melik all of a sudden. Yep. So he is up in exchange and a pawn. Granted, black has these two wonderful bishops. Mm -hmm. Do not underestimate these bishops because one's aiming at g2, one's aiming at h2, and if I can get both of those pawns and keep my h right. pawn, not to mention that this knight on h8 is in a weird spot. Whoa. What? Whoa. Okay, well, those pa those bishops were so strong that he just said, take the exchange back. Yeah, that was not a good move. I think I can pretty objectively say that. Took with the pawn to keep his rook active. That was... Sure, but now his... I guess his, the weak pawns aren't that big of a deal here since he's just going to come up with the king anyway, but... That was shocking. I wonder why he did that. Um, that was beyond shocking. I mean, I, I was putting arrows on these bishops, so I get it, but... You get the, the, the intimidation, but... I just... I can't fully understand. I'm trying my best here. I'm trying to be, you know, empathetic, put myself in the shoes, all that stuff, but it just seems like black is so easily getting active here, and mm -hmm. that knight on h8 has a while to go before it gets back into play. So, like, knight right. g6 is met by rook to e2, and I love my rook on e2. What is that knight doing on f7? He's just trying to get out h6, f5, so, anything, so really. Maybe bishop f4 here, just to ask you. Just, just to lock that poor knight in. Or rook e7, <laughs> knight h6, bishop f4, knight f5, right. rook e5, things like this. Keep attacking your knight. Yeah. Or, I mean, in the other end game, sure, it was uneven, but here white just seems worse. Well, just, I, I, obviously, it also was a lot better, but... Yeah, whites have a pawn still, so we can't take that for granted, but you, <laughs> the activity speaks for itself here. Yeah, I like Vardis' comment. Oh, that bishop is annoying me. I'll take it with my rook. That's <laughs> probably what was happening. That's something I would do. Oh, okay. Yikes. Well. Um, yeah. Do, you, do we want to... I wish I understood what just happened better. That's what I'm trying to do, is understand understand what, what's going on there. Uh, he, he might have just made a mistake. Um, and now he is going to have to deal with the consequences. But the other game that is heating up is the one between Negi and Driev. We were looking at it earlier, where Negi had three pawns in exchange for a piece. Whoa. Yeah, so I, I don't head. want to see Negi lose, though. I flipped the board because seeing it from the bl Black's position really hurt yeah. my head with all the pawns. I picked Negi for my fantasy team. I picked mm -hmm. um, Negi, I picked Shanklin, and Naroditsky because the Surfers lost 14-2 to two last week, and those three players are super strong, so I decided to go with the mechanics. But Negi that is, makes sense. Negi's not helping my fantasy team at all right now. No, um... He's had a tough start. He drew his first game to players who are lower rated, and now, I mean, obviously, Dreyev is a great player, but I would like to see him recover here. He can't push c3 because both knights are looking towards it. He just... A6... At least his pawns are protected here. It just seems like they're going to fall. Yeah. Like... Now you have his a6 pawn that's weak, the c4 pawn, which is not yeah. that strong because the knights cover the c3 square pretty well. So what um, move? Rook b6 to attack the knight seems decent to try yeah. to get and, the a pawn. And Zilot is asking, how do you recover from big mistakes in tournament play mentally? What do you do? 
obviously great question since Nagy is probably having to deal with that right now. And Robert, you so you coached the women's Olympiad team. What advice did you give your players when they were trying to recover from bad games? Well, I mean, every round is a new tournament, right? You, If you're playing in round three of an event, that just consider it as round one. What happened in the past, you learn from it, but it should not seep into your mind. Otherwise, it's just a distraction. And mm-hmm. you need to be objective when you play. You can't be thinking, I lost last game, so I need to win this one. You just got to do what's best over the Good board. advice, but very difficult to do in practice. Yeah, it's I mean, difficult. But if, if you've lost a couple of games early on. If you're like me and don't have a heart, it's pretty simple, right? You just... Okay, Robo Hess. Exactly, robot. That's what uh, I've had little kids Hess call me does that. does not compute. Yeah, exactly. Kids who can't pronounce, you know, they're so little that they have a hard time pronouncing things. Instead of saying Robert, they say robot. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cute. And I'm like, okay, it works. I'll take it works. It. It's actually more accurate than Robert, so why not? <laughs> okay, well, Shanklin, let's go back to that endgame real quick because okay, Melek yeah. has made great progress. And is he going to be able to win this, though? That's the essential question. Every time we, we come, the evaluation slightly changes. Yep. And it looks good for it's a king d6 here, followed by rook e7 check. Melek has the old school Soviet technique, so I think he knows mm-hmm. how to uh, finish this one off. Although, watch out. If you play rook g7 and you play rook e7 check, can I take, take, and play c5? I think I can. And watch out for that. Is that going to happen? Oh. Okay, no, oh. it's it's not going to happen. Oh, because Shanklin put his rook out to h4, which was a bad move. Yep. I don't think white should take. Maybe he should just... Okay, that, that looks good. Yeah, take with a rook on c6 to protect c4. And now it's a win. So picking Shanklin was a mistake, clearly. He just lost his game. Picking Oh, Nagy... the SF mechanics. Rough times. Yeah, they're letting me down. But I just want to go back to this position after 46 yep. king d6, because it's very instructive. Rook to g7... Rook e7 check does not work. You want to trade the rooks off when you're up material, right? Get into king mm-hmm. and pawn endgame, where it looks like you're about to win as long as you get your king back to d6. Right. But then black plays c5. And the point is if you take on c5, the black king plays king c6, take on c5, mm-hmm. take on c4, and then come get your pawn here. So let's just do a quick... Yep, um, the king is just too far from his pawns, and the black king is blocking him off, so he gets to collect all three. Yeah, uh, collect both C pawns, and white will collect the A pawn, yeah. but you're just a draw, right? Because king yeah. and A pawn versus king, especially in a position like this, as long as my king is on the C8 square, that's C8 or C7 it makes a draw, these two, and not my king is going to get there. Because your king it can't box me out anymore. There's no more files. So that was a, a last-ditch attempt to make a draw. Instead... He went rook h4 and very quickly resigned once this rook took on c6, protecting the c4 pawn. Okay. Well, how is uh, Daniel doing? He better be winning because I picked him too. You picked him as well. Well, one of your players he has won't a, let you down. He has a pawn on a7. I think he's doing pretty well. Yep. Pawn on e7. His king is safe. Black's king isn't. Yep. Queen c7 check will come. And the, where's this bishop going? I don't, to a8 maybe? Looks iffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, and then even if it goes to a8, white can protect the e-pawn and grab the c-pawn as well, and Keaton might just lose some time. Yeah. Okay, queen I think queen b8 wins. Yeah. Queen d8, queen b8, both look good, and queen c7 check. That looks fine. How to end this game, though? Black is just going to run out of moves. Okay, so queen... He can't take yet. Queen D- or he can, I guess. He's just going to go to an end game where he's going to create a pass pawn on both sides of the board. So he has this pass yep. A pawn, and he's four on two on the king side. So as long as... Oh, now he pushes E6. Okay, well, that, and that just ended the game. He course. just made it even easier. The bishop can't hold both. Yeah. Um, I mean, with 10 seconds going into end games, he knows he can easily win. Makes sense. Yep. So <laughs> how did that game... Between... Anna actually picked very a very similar team to you, and shout out to Anna, the uh, another amazing PCL commentator in chat. Yeah. Who's not just doing commentary, but also watching. We all make uh, mistakes. Oh, okay. The Negi game I'm is there. almost over. Don't worry, I'm there. You're there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Robo Hess. Yeah, I, knows I, where to go. I um, knew where you wanted me to go. <laughs> Wow, we finally hear Robert's natural voice. Yeah, I know. Okay. I've been putting on the show this entire time. Oh, man. But really, well, so I Nikki speak just... like this. 
and I want to talk about chess and learn from Alexander. Robo Hess, Cortez. what do you think of this position? Negi's down a bishop. I think that Negi is... Wait a second. Look at the H pawn and look at the light square bishop. Wrong corner. So if Negi can give away both of his pawns for the F pawn and trade knights, it's a draw. So that actually gives Negi some decent chances to hold a position like this. So let's figure out how to get there. So after if king d4, knight d2. Play knight d2 and try to go to f1. Okay. I think he might hold this. He's getting much closer. King f4. Oh. King f4. Don't, don't flag. King back. Yeah, knight so f1 is a big threat here. coming after this pawn. So can black white just play king d3? When? Now? The e4? No, because he loses yeah, the bishop. The hey, just and move it over. If you take king f3, this is going to be a draw, I feel like. Take it. It's a draw. Or is it? He won on oh! time! Oh! Maggie is my hero! I knew I should have picked him! He won on time! How? How does it happen? It was winning for him. Ah, oh, the dirty flag happened. Maggie, how did you do that? I knew we were friends for a reason. And yes. I think knight takes g4 here is probably winning for white because after king takes g4, oh no, is it winning? King e4. Sorry, busy spamming emotes. Maybe I take it back. King Out of flag all. No, maybe that's a draw or. Oh no, I guess you win by a tempo, essentially. So I, I just put it on the board. Instead, where he lost on time, it's so like bishop f3, king f3, knight takes g4 is the move. Right. And I'm pretty sure after king g4, king e3, king e3, f4, king takes h2, f... King f3? Yeah, so king h3, black, white plays f4, mm -hmm. king h2, white plays f5, and you'll play, let's say, I don't know, king g2, sure. f6, here, f7, this is actually hilarious how this ends. f8, h1 equals queen, and then I have mm -hmm. queen g7 check. And I think that the black king is getting mated here. So, king, my king f2? Is... Wait, my king's on e3. Yeah, your king's not close enough for mate. If it was on e3? No, my king is on e3. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was playing along with the moves and I had my king on e4. Okay, yes. Yeah, the problem is with my king on e3, it's so close to the action. So if you go king to f1, I go mm -hmm. queen, I think, f7 check. And yep. then you, if you go king at e1, I give you a check and a mate on d2. If you go after queen f7 check, king back to g2, then I have, I think, queen g6 check. And I keep inching my queen closer before ending up with a mate. So for example, king h2 runs into qu king f2. This is a known win when your king and queen are on the last rank or last yep, file. I clearly know your uh, queen and king endgame is here. I know a little bit about this. A little. Just a little bit. So yeah, here it would be a problem. So and if you go to f1, then I have queen f5 check, and the same exact pattern ensues. If you go to g1, queen f2 is checkmate. If you go to g2, then I have check. Here, check, here, mate. So that's all the instruction I'm doing today. I'm done. I quit. I'm retired. I hope. Thank uh, you, Teacher Hess. Robot Hess, Teacher Hess, Robo Teacher wears many hats. Um, but I, so I think we should quickly look at the Dallas Destiny and Minnesota Blizzard game since they're so close. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I, the most interesting game so far seems like the one between Andrew Tang and Conrad Holt. You definitely got quieter. I'm just going to point that out. I got quieter. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I, you know. You silenced there me it with is. that Not impressive rook endgame knowledge. Okay, I just moved the mic a little closer. There you are. I hear you much better, loud and clear. So you wanted me to go Perfect. to which game in this match between um, these? Andrew Tang and Conrad Holt. Andrew Tang and Conrad Holt. Can do that to well known chess players. It's six and a half, five and a half in favor of Very the Destiny. close. Yep. So, Similar to the SF mechanics in San Diego Surfers, even though you thought that it was going to be a clean, not a clean sweep, but in pretty heavy in the mechanics favor. I mean, who didn't? They, they have the dream team. <laughs> they have the dream team, and this position with the double F pawns does not look ideal for Tang. And then you realize that black's up a pawn and white's missing an H pawn, which can be good because you have an open H file to attack, potentially. 
but it just looks odd because where's my h bomb? So I think that here, if I'm white, how do I actually make an attack though? That's the real problem. Like this bishop on right. g6 is a very good defender. So he decided to take it, which I guess is the follow of his rook takes c6. Because the pawn on b7 is pinned, as the rook on b8's hanging at the end there. So that is a tactic that seems to be okay for white, though after rook c6, b c6, queen b8, even this is not the uh, end of the world for black. The king on f is on f1. This now mm -hmm. open b file can be used by black soon to come after the b2 pawn. So, yeah, definitely counter chances for black even after rook c6. Yep. Um, although it is really hard for black to get out of that after the queen is on b8. It looks like he might have to trade his queen with queen b6 or knight d6. It's pretty hard to untangle. I guess he could play like yeah, I mean, actually, your move queen b6 looks very good as well. Uh, I like knight d6 just because I want my knight to end up in the center, but queen b6 does really put that pressure on white, say, you have to trade me, and in which case we're in an end game where it doesn't look like black has many weaknesses. True. And, and apparently uh, Anton Smirnov is crushing Sargisian, and the game is about to end. Whoa, I just pulled up that game. And uh... Smirnov iced him. Is that, a, is that good? Okay, yeah, okay. I finally get the joke. <laughs> Wait, when when did you first learn of the joke? You 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 made a Smirnoff joke before, and just wait until I ice you, and you're gonna have to drink the Smirnoff. Just you know, that's how it works. I just yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so his king is on d1. Um, it reminds me of those games where beginners place their king and queen on the wrong yeah. position to start off with. And look at this. I mean, is black black's up two pawns, right? <laughs> Normally, right. when you get this attack, you sacrifice a piece and two pawns yeah, for yeah, the attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to no. go back. And he's going to take on c4 soon as well, or he can. I'm going through the opening because uh, he played this tricky line with um, e5 in the QGA. And so mm -hmm. bishop d2 came on the board, and he went rook a2. And I guess... This line you're supposed to take on b4, I think, with the bishop on move 9. Just give up the rook and try to claim counterplay on the dark squares. It's a very mm -hmm. complicated position. The bishop can always retreat to c3 and take e5, things like that. I don't actually know. This the, game makes me want to play the queen's gambit, except... <laughs> yeah, if it's, if it's this easy to I mean, be winning as black, you definitely want to do that. It's but, basically 0-1, but yeah. I mean, it is 0-1 already in this game because... Look at this move, bishop g4. Mm -hmm. Another nice... Nice move played just to distract the queen from the f2 square. And took on f2, took on f1, gave a check on d3, and now, okay, we're in this position where pretty much anything should be winning for black as you're up two full pawns. Your king is safe. White's king is not. Um, can you take on c4? It's a third pawn if you want it. Like, if I go pawn, take c4. Oh, then there's g7s hanging, I guess. Right. So, okay, let's, But let's even if white it. takes on... I guess you don't want to let white take on g7 and e5 unnecessary. So, um, so actually, how does, in the current position, yep. black seems like he needs more pieces to help him with the attack. So knight bc6. Protects Makes e5, a lot of sense, yep. Protects e5, allows the rook to come to d8, allows that knight mm -hmm. to go to b4 or d4. Or... <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Such... A normal developing move, but so powerful at the same time because of the position here. And if queen takes g7 in that position, I just play rook g8. Yeah, no, rook no g8 worries or something there. like that. Then rook to d8. I Maybe mean, can castle queenside, honestly, and just <laughs> get yeah, that rook into the Actually, attack. he could castle queenside. It's not like his king is any less safe there or like it matters because white's can't get any counterplay anyways you're right i can't look at this anymore i'm sorry i just can't do it it hurts i thought you loved looking at these yeah but like now i'm looking at it from sargissian's perspective and like the guy's uh -huh. got a family right i mean you can't, <gasps> just this is this is tough to to watch that's true so. his kids are probably looking crying daddy how could you let us down <laughs> like this oh don't, don't put all that on him come on he's, uh, <laughs> he's just a chess player here we don't want to do that to him. Okay, okay. I got a little more dramatic than we needed to. Um, so, which game would you like to look at? Um, let's see. Mol oh. Molten versus 
Uh, Jared Dot, 95. That's Ali Khan Ergaliev with the black piece against Moulton Lee. Because mm -hmm. there's a king on g7 that looks like it's in danger of getting checkmated. Right? Because there's a. This king. I mean, can I go queen h1 check and pick up the rook? What's, what's the deal here? Queen h1 check. King e2 or king one of the twos. King yeah, king. let's just put it up. King d2. Queen takes, yeah. queen takes a1, uh, let's say, bishop just to see if white has some. Yeah, bishop e8 check. Keep the pawn protected on g6. And then yep. no matter where the king is, I'm just going to throw in queen f7 or queen h7 with checkmate. Yeah. The so queen d8 is a sad move to have to play, especially because white can even take this pawn on b7 to go up a third pawn. Mm -hmm. You could probably just trade queens and say I'm up two pawns in an end game, and I have a yep. bishop against a knight. And he took on d8, and rook c1 will take the open file. The knight on a6 has nowhere really to go. Mm -hmm. This is yikes. Yeah. So the score right now for the kangaroos is 6-2. So it looks like Molten is winning his game. Smirnov is winning his game. Um, Raymond Song is less clear. Okay. But they'll probably get at least eight points, which means they've almost yeah. clutched the match. Yeah, so if they're going to clinch it soon, we can go to a different match. I think we should stay on the Dallas and the San Francisco matches because they're almost done and they're very close. So yep. We get, I put a pull up Shanklin's game. He's playing Alexei Dreyev, and he'll yep. really need to rebound here for his team to feel confident about their chances. Wow, lots happening in the center. No pieces have been traded, but many pieces are possibly being traded in the next couple moves. Um, okay, I would think about taking with my e pawn on d5. So actually, before you say the variation, okay. I think it'd be really instructive because there's three possible, actually, uh, yeah, three possible exchanges that can happen for white in the position here, yeah. right? How would you think about these and know where to take? Would you rather take on e5, on d5? I'd rather take on d5 and take with my e pawn, I think. I'm not positive about it, but I think I would take on d5 with the e pawn because after c takes d5, at some point, I will have this move bishop to f5. And right. that is what my position needs. My bishop needs to, to breathe a little bit. And mm -hmm. I don't want to give a fully open c file to this rook because if I take with a c pawn on d5, right. then after cd5, cd5, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. well, my knight can't move. Now there's going to be some shots in the e4 square. So if I go e takes d5, then e4 comes in, forking my bishop and my knight on d3 and f3. There's a pin down the c file. So these kind of things bother me from White's perspective. And so he did go e takes d5. And now I expect c takes d5. And again, I have options between knight b5 just to hit this bishop on d6. That actually looks very tempting because after mm -hmm. knight b5, you go bishop to b8 as a way to protect your bishop and protect the pawn a7. Then I might even be able to play pawn takes e5 and open up the, the d file, try to get to mm -hmm. the d6 square, or bishop f5 at some point will be a good move as well. It just yeah. looks like the position is opening up and white is first to the punch. So that does look really good for white. His pieces are in beautiful coordination. Um, I will just point out that uh, the games between Minnesota and Dallas Destiny are very close to ending. Okay, so let's keep, um, sure, keep our focus it's, there. And it's a little bit further on in the game. Yeah, let's look at Fidel. Yeah, and, Gra and also, yeah, our our friendly neighborhood commissioner, Greg Shahadi, mentioned this as well. Oh, Greg so said something, you. and let's ignore it and do the exact opposite. Okay, <laughs> but Fidel Corrales with the black pieces here against Jian Chao Zhao. I think it's going to be a draw. When I see this pawn structure for white, I think that, okay, my king, if it goes to g2, black will always mm -hmm. have a queen d5 check because the king's in a very right. vulnerable uh, place. And if I go king g1, then there's queen d1 check, and I'll keep my queen d2, queen d1, queen d5 stuff alive. So we, again, this is very similar to the perpetual we saw earlier, except that obviously there's a bishop blocking the checks here. Yep. But and d6 is hanging, by the way. So you can play bishop takes d6, but if you play bishop d6, then I think I, I have sort of perpetual check ideas of my own with queen d8 check and staying behind the pawn. Right. I mean, both sides have perpetual threats, right? Should they? That's why I think it's they please playing queen d1, queen d2. Corrales is not even risking it. I think it's, there's no, you know, if you take, let's say you take on d6 with the queen, mm -hmm. then black, white can even play queen takes a7 there, threatening the b6 pawn. So, you know, both kings are feeling a little bit vulnerable. So mm -hmm. they'll be self-conscious together and just agree on a draw. 
<laughs> I, I like that. Um, but I, I think it's, yeah, it's exactly what happened. We were expecting this. Um, the game between Andrew Tang and Conrad? Conrad. Oh, so Cameron Wheeler and Thomas Beardson just drew. They're not allowed so to do that. So seven, six. Dallas Destiny needs a point and a half more to win, a point to draw. Wait, why do they draw? I'm looking at, I pulled up their game, and there's a white pawn in the seventh rank. Uh, it went rook d8, and then he went rook d7. Why did he just move his queen away after rook d8? I would have tried something like that to move my queen and use my c pawn because, yes, black is up a pawn, but it's the qu quality of the pawn, the c pawn is very passed, versus the mm -hmm. quantity, what black's up one. So, okay, for the match situation, Wheeler, his team is ahead, and he's the black pieces. It's a very good draw for him. If I'm Beardson, mm -hmm. I'm playing on for my team. But let's look at their other games because maybe something else is going on that I'm not seeing. Whoa, Conrad Holt has a queen on h6. Yep, but, but there's no queen h8 threat because of the black queen on d4. Um, and yeah, Tang's probably just Andrew ready. Tang is is up two pawns. It's a little awkward because one of them is on g4. Yep. But somehow he's protecting his kingside position because queen h7, the black king goes to f8 and he has space to escape. So probably Conrad must have sacrificed a pawn earlier on to try to get this attack and the attack is not strong enough unless there's something you see. No, and his move rook to e8 was important because he went knight takes e4. Mm -hmm. He's actually blundering away the game back on move 31 because queen h7 check, king f8, queen h8 check is not mate, but the rook on c8 would have been hanging at the end of that variation. So that was a, an important thing to point out, but now that he went rook e8, the rook's in a very safe square. So these ideas of queen h7, queen h8, well, the king will just run to e7, where the rook is safe and sound on the e8 square. Safe and sound. Yep. Oh, that's not how the song goes, but... No, but we'll, we'll let it be. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. All right, so 46 seconds, 34. Um, what role do you think time is going to have here? Ooh. Nice move, queen c4 check, forcing the king of the g file when queen takes g4 will happen with another check. I just answered my own question. How is time going to have a play here? Eh, it's going to cause but, some blood. So that's a win for the blizzard. Let's look at the other game between Nagel and... Seven and a half, seven and a half. Yeah, okay. We got to check out that last game between yep. Zhu Jiner and Sean Nagel because the both sides need their player to win. It looks like mm -hmm. Nagel is on the better side of this because of king safety. The queen and bishop line up very well on this diagonal, forming a battery. Queen f7 or queen g8 is just one check. The king can find temporary shelter on the h6 square, but I'm a little worried about the king. That said, the pawn on b4 is more mobile because if, say, the queens were traded, then black yep. can blockade in the dark squares. The knight can go from color to color. I don't like knight b6. That's putting your knight away from your king's safety. Um, oh, g4. Sh yeah, this is going to be really tough for now. F4 is a big threat because the queen needs to stay tied to the F8 square. Right. Uh -oh. and he, So he only has seven seconds. He's making the moves that make sense right away. Um, I wonder if... He, and now he's thinking on her time as well. Does he have any direct threats here? So if it was... F4. Huge Black threat. Star to move. Yeah, he would just... So, F4 or... Yeah. So now bishop A4 should be played. Just attack the knight. Play bishop A4. Mm -hmm. Do, don't flag. Oh no, f4 can't be good here. The knight covers f8. It's a draw. Yep. Queen f4, and then it's going to be a perpetual. It's queen f3, queen f2. What is that? Now, now, now he's he losing. Can take on g5. Now he's going to yeah. lose because he's and losing maybe his bishop. He I don't know what he missed here. Oh my gosh. And the, the worst thing is that if he oh loses this game, God. Dallas Destiny wins. Oh, he lost. And Dallas is going to win because of a. Terrible blunder. Oh my gosh. He done goofed. That's right. He done oh. goofed to say the least here. Hey Birdman, good to see you. Oh. Front page hive. Ah, uh, okay. I it's so painful to see players lose like this when they're oh. not only in a better position, but then there was a drunk position and his entire team is depending on him for the match. No pressure, Sean. Yeah. Oh, come on. I can't even look at this anymore. We all everyone who watches the Pro Chess League knows that you know i'm a big sean nagel fan oh now the queens are getting traded this b pawn will become another queen this is a win for zhu jiner game set match in favor of dallas yep 
brutal. Well, so, she did manage her time better, so. Just to go back to the really critical moment here, F4 was played because he had no time on his clock. Instead, yep. he should have played with like bishop to A4, kicking this knight. And the point is, if this knight goes to B6, F4 mm -hmm. comes now, threatening G5 check. If you take yep. on F4, queen F8 is checkmate on the spot because your king has no escape squares. So bishop A4 was a nice move necessary to kick that knight, and like I said, play for F4 and G5. If you get exactly. G5 in, it's a very forced checkmate on H7. Check and mate. King has no more squares. So a yep. nice tactic by Nagel, and only to botch it and let his opponent win. So i got to get off this game because it's making me sad. You're, you're going to get upset. Yeah, I mean, after F4 and queen takes F4, he could have also just accepted a draw here. Yep. Um, well, not accepted a draw, but... He could have made a draw for sure. Actually, he could have made a draw. Pull that after up. Knight, queen takes D7, he's up a knight, so black has to keep white in perpetual here. And I think when you have four seconds and the position is this tricky you should probably go for it yeah i mean just he had the well yeah some guy's saying he literally had four seconds on his clock though that's why he should have gone into this variation which is actually easier to calculate than what he tried yeah and you need you need to know the team situation right because yeah you're just losing the, the match for your team and i don't want to blame it solely on him it's not just his fault no no of course, of course not. right but you just you gotta know the team situation and Sam Shanklin, by the way, is doing work on Alexei Drea for exactly the position we talked about. He took on d5, went knight b5, took on e5, and mm -hmm. Drea got tactical with d takes c4. The reason being was knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5 would have dropped the a7 pawn with a tempo on the rook on c8. So instead of doing that in the game, he took on c4. Shanklin mm -hmm. simply took back bishop f3. He said, I don't care about my kingside pawn structure. I have a rook pinning your knight on d7. My knight. If we trade bishops, we'll say bishop takes e5 here. I will simply take your bishop, and then I will play knight d6 and win your f7 pawn because I have two attacks. You're saying, one you're saying this with such conviction. This is probably how he was actually thinking it in his head if somebody were to listen in. Yeah. Wait, what? Because I it says not sure this was winning. Uh, Did he just question the robo heads? He did. We'll look at it later. I just we got to stay on this for now. Yeah, yeah. This this game is. I feel confident it was winning, but I also realized I didn't go far enough in showing why I think right. it's winning. But yes, very good point of questioning me there. Uh, what because? Okay, so. So Shank I don't winning. know. I mean. Alexi can either move his knight or take on e5. Yeah, but if you move your knight, the only safe score is h5, and then the idea is the queen to f5 just yeah. look lights out with f7 being. Yeah, so that looks bad. Um, can't take on e5 with the knight because he's pinned. Can't take with the rook. That's bad. So probably bishop takes e5 is the best option here. Played, and now bishop takes e5 and knight d6. I would play immediately. And here mm -hmm. goes Shanklin. There, he did it immediately. Yep. And that wins material because rook is hanging, f7 pawn is hanging. Yikes. Wow. When Shanklin win, he re wins, he really wins, you know? Yeah. We saw this game, the first game. Um... Shanky. Shank. Heck, and Negi drew his game against Melakachian on move nine. So. Oh, I think Negi's just tired. Well, he probably has homework to do or something. I wonder if he asked his teammates because I would never. But I don't know if they're actually allowed to talk to each other or if they're playing together, but yeah. Uh, Subliminal Canine, thank you for subscribing with Twitch Prime and helping support awesome chess events like this one. We appreciate it. Absolutely. But yeah, sorry, you were you're giving him the talk. Yeah, well, I, I, if you're allowed to talk to your teammates, you have to ask if you can make a draw there because um, yeah, you, the team or your manager, you need to say, excuse me, like you know, I I may have stuff to do, but I for the team we're up. Right now, seven to six. Is that okay? Should I try to play on? But right, yeah. Well, maybe he saw Shanklin's position, which is winning. Yeah, that's, um, that's very. Daniel fair. has been playing extremely well, so he may have assumed that him getting a draw on that board would. Yeah, but Daniel's position looks terrible. Uh, yeah, I was saying Daniel has been winning because I think he's gone three zero so far. Okay. No, he's gone two and a half, which is still pretty strong okay terrible was also a strong thing to say it's not terrible but i like white's position in shang versus narodisky and i would play immediately queen over to h4 because i see narodisky 
I know he's a mm -hmm. tricky guy. At some point, I'm worried about bishop takes h3, and there's rook doing something to me on the king side, and the f2 square. So queen h4, protecting all of that at once feels like a good strategy. Mm -hmm. And then I can try to play c4, c5, and trap your bishop. Yeah. Well, so if he does play queen h4... Boom. Eesh. There it is. Scary. You're right. Scary looking moves. Scary Are, you, looking are moves. you listening to me, buddy? Did, did you just hear what I had to say and felt like it was the right thing to do? Because he literally played queen h4 just after I was done talking about it. So. Oh, okay. I thought you were... Sorry, you said buddy, and I, I got very intimidated. Oh. I don't, I don't like it when people say buddy. No, I would never call you buddy. It's very okay. condescending, and I, w I wouldn't do that. It was... Yeah, Talking whoever to someone uses who buddy listen. in a condescending term sounds like a terrible person. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't do that to you, but I was doing it to somebody who couldn't listen to me because they're playing a chess game, and so it was more like, it was it was friendly. Okay. Didn't mean to offend, I'm sorry. No, Forgive no, it's okay. I, I'm joking because I always call people buddy, so I'm make, actually making fun of myself, not you. You're wonderful, and uh, the games are good. Okay. So let's see, where should we go? So Neroditsky, his game is really interesting. I think it'll be going on for a while. I want to go back to the Shanklin game because I want to see how Drayev decided to handle it. He well, th there's two knights on the d-file, a rook on d1, pinning both of them. He just took on c8, so... So is he going to take back, I assume? I guess he ha He should take back, because otherwise he's, like, he's just given up. Right. And then queen somewhere. Just move my right. queen. I don't know where. Queen c1. I'm attacking your knight, and I'm keeping the queen trade alive, along with back wing yep. check. Back rank checkmate threats. Can't speak. Yikes. Um, yeah, Shanklin I mean, is cruising. Yeah. So I'm Where sure, I'm sure everything the wins. Black Knight on d5 go after that. If he tries to play something like Knight from five, the fifth rank to f6 just to move it away, oh. then White has Bishop takes f7 check, attacking the queen, winning the queen. Yep. That looks powerful. So. Yep. I'm sure anything is almost winning at this point because he's up <laughs> he's up a full rook right now, and if Drev's not yeah. immediately capturing back, he's either looking for some desperate attack on the king side or thinking, when can I resign? But mm -hmm. we have, so it's just the game, so it's 7-7 seven to seven right now. Very close. Someone just lost. I guess, Rich, was it, yeah, Keaton Kira beat Rochelle Wu. Ooh, nice, Ooh, and a nice ending move, D6. Rochelle Wu has had a tough... Of day to day, similar to Sean Nagel, both of them weren't able to score today. Actually, also for the Seattle Sluggers, so it seems like the the teams who aren't doing as well today have just had their board four demolished. Yeah. Zella Charge says, "Credit to Botes for occasionally engaging with chat. I'm too focused. Forgot the well, fun of chat engagement. I engage with the chat. I mean, he's also doing this super engagement with the board, so we're." <laughs> Other out here. Yeah, you know, this isn't a polyamorous relationship. I just have to be engaged to one or the other, I guess. Exactly. So, Shanklin, so, so Knight of Four was played. It, I love it. You've said so many times I can't look at this position anymore several games, and then you come back to watch it unfold. It's like Puzzle Rush, you know? Like, I say yeah. one more, last one, and then I keep going. But Knight of Four, Queen G5 check is the threat with Queen G2 mate, so don't fall for that, Shanklin. Find a move that saves your... Okay, bishop takes f7 check. Might be good because there are tactics with queen c4 check, I think. Your knight on f4 is not very safe. Something like that. I'm sorry, there's an alarm beeping. Yeah, I was wondering if your popcorn was ready or something no, was going wrong. No, I think it's one of my, my housemates left. I'm just going to close it before it drives everybody nuts. Okay, go for it. So I... It, one second. Oh, Shanklin did go for bishop f7 check and wins the game. And now I'm all by myself, so I can pay attention to the chat and talk about the game, but Victor Mikuleski has 16 seconds left. What is going on here? White is up a piece, and the bishop covers the queening square. His b2 pawn, well, that's not really going anywhere. Yeah, it looks like Mikuleski's going to win this one. He could play g4, try to play bishop. Okay, now I'll just take this pawn and completely win. Sorry about that. Hey, you're back. I'm back. Oh, Shanklin won. Okay. Shanklin won, and Viktor Mikulevsky is about to beat Alexei Sarana, or Sarana, I think actually is perhaps pronunciation. I have to see. Wow. Is Sarana getting defeated? It looks that, like it. That 
possible? It looks like it. Yeah, just down a piece. So I, I'm going away from his game just because um, the Nerdisky yeah, game yeah, it's, it's, is it's for all the marbles. Is they're up eight to seven. So Nerdisky needs to hold a draw from the mechanics to win their match. And I right. hate. Right. Um, and so are, all the, are the rest of the games finished between them? Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is the last game. Right, because it's 8-7, of course. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I love this comment here. It's not Which a Miss Botez commentary until we blame our housemates for making too much noise. <laughs> Coffee. What? <laughs> that, that's, that's life, you know? Yeah. Okay, and uh, John Bartholomew just raided us. John Mar Bartholomew for the Minnesota Blizzards. JB uh, in the you. house. Fins. Hashtag Team Scandy, even though Scandinavian is a terrible opening. Um, Robert just likes crushing all of our favorite openings. Well, French, Scandinavian. Maybe you should pick better favorites. You're entitled to your opinion. You might just need a better opinion. Oh, okay. That was painful. I'm sorry. Um, Did the truth hurt? It's fine. I'll get you back. Will you? So. Oh. Okay, yeah, I'm waiting for, wait it. for it. We have commentary together on Valentine's Day, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm going to throw all the punches. Yeah, I'll send oh, you. Oh, I just thought of a brilliant idea. Uh, okay. Don't, don't say it. Oh, I'm not going to say it. I'm just creating the, <laughs> the excitement. JB um, goes, Team Scandy, 1D5, Hater Hess. Good alliteration <laughs> there. Yeah, Hater Hess. Man. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to try to hate on Nerodisky's position a little bit less. Well, I, I've been trying to figure out something for Daniel here. Yeah, so that's why you've been speechless because... Yeah, there's... because there, well, I don't know what he should do here. Okay, I like that decision because it trades off this attacking piece on D3. But the problem right. with Black's position is it, look, it looks like White did practically nothing. Right, All the pawns are on their starting squares except for this pawn H3. And yeah. White's pieces are perfectly placed, just like simple development. Whereas Black looks like he's gone absolutely berserk, playing G5, double C pawns, all these things with weaknesses in the position. So I would take this bishop on F5 and then play a move like knight to D3, covering my F2 pawn, and right. then move my queen away and play for C4 again. This just looks so yeah, nice. Yeah, that was the most structurally sound idea here. But it seems like what he tried to do instead is take advantage of the fact that Black overextended his pawns on the king side and tried to get an attack so he played the more active knight e4 although i don't know if that was better than what you suggested probably not yeah now now bishop now takes he's d3. ending up with the same position but with his knight on g3 yeah bishop takes d3 now what's his follow-up okay his knight is coming to f5 or that's the intention but after mm -hmm. bishop takes d3 queen takes d3 as we just saw happen now yep. queen f no Maybe queen f6, queen somewhere, knight f6, something? Queen f6. I don't know. I'm just asking, saying everything as a question. So queen f6 looking towards b2, actually. But then, I'm... but that that's probably, he's not going to take yeah, it. Yeah, c4 will come in probably. So in knight yeah. f4. Okay, that's a reasonable move. So do you take it on f4? The problem with taking on f4 is the black rook lands on e2 at the end of these variations, right? Because right. I'm going to trade queens and then put my rook on e2, and you're not going to be happy about that. Yep. Um, but so queen takes, rook takes is not actually a good option here, even though white has a better pawn structure, because now black was able to activate his pieces. So it doesn't seem like a good trade off. Yeah. Um. And just keep an eye on. So. Australia already beat Seattle nine to three. That's a beat down. Yikes. Oh man. Yikes. But okay, well it's not as bad as what was the score? Fourteen to two. Fourteen to two. Wow. Yeah, not good. No, so I see Saffir Lee still playing, so it's good that he's back for the hackers. But we'll focus on them after we finish this game between Narrative. Five Don't looks like that move at all. Vicious because of rook d6. Ooh, look at you trying to go right after that and pin well, that bishop. But I mean, it, it's a pin. The bishop can't move. Well, maybe you go knight e4 after rook d6. Okay, so knight e4 um, and rook. Oh, yeah. Alexandra, you're a genius. Knight e2 check. King moves and knight d4. The queen has no good squares to go to. You go, I totally saw that. I think you did. Give yourself more credit. Yeah. So queen f6 was played. That also looks like a good move to trading off the queens. And there's going to be pressure on the f2 square. But 
you are, you just, just Rook D6 just is do great. What to do here. I mean, that was just super awesome. And the problem is this queen is nowhere good to go. If you go queen G4, F5, forks queen and knight. And if wow. you go queen to E5, then how am I trapping your queens? And rook E6 magic? Yeah, rook E6. And your queen can't move without losing your knight on E4. So that was a very tricky line to see under a minute. But yeah, but Narodisky plays. Oh, that was actually quite nice. Um, so he played queen F6. Queen F6, which, like, again, it's a very safe move. Narodisky is an extremely talented blitz and bullet player, and he's under a minute on the clock. This is the move where you don't have to calculate as much, but it's interesting because mm -hmm. he spent 40 seconds on it. So I don't know what he was worried about in this Rook D6 variation, but clearly something bothered him enough where he said, I just yeah. don't want to even bother with this at all and just go forward Queen F6, and if he trades Queens, I'm definitely going to hold the end game, is what his right. logic is. Yeah, he, he may have been thinking of the team score overall, Maybe he was worried he'd miss something in the other line, and they just need a draw, so yeah, think, why not go for that? I think he didn't see it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, it's not meant to be a criticism. It's just it's very hard to be under the stress of playing. Like People it, always ask me, like, when I commentate, like, you should just play because you see all these things. Like, But it's so stress-free for me. to. They, they miss or forget about yeah. all the blunders I make. And then remember that I had some good variations sometimes. So like, just play more. I'm like, yeah, but it's so stress-free. If I'm wrong, all that happens is Alexander Botez laughs at me, and then I move on with my life. Right, right, which is... And I cry when she does that, but let's just pretend like I'm okay with it. Uh, you're, you're getting stronger. It's okay. <laughs> all right, trade the queens, Daniel. Put your rook on E2. Just yep. do it. Ten seconds. No, oh. what is that? That would not be the move I want to play. Okay, but this, this is a... Queen F3. Keep Too the queens bad. on, Shang. No, keep the queen, queen. There it is. Now the okay. F4 pawn's coming down. The king is still weak for black. No. I thought he was just trying to trade off queens, but... Um... Which is why he should have traded queens when he could. That's a good lesson for everybody, that mm -hmm. when you have the opportunity, sometimes it's good to like allow your opponent to start the trade, but you just mm -hmm. can't leave it there for too long, because look at the position now. The knight on F4 is yeah. well defended. And oh, please play faster. Yeah, just king up. That's a move when you have two seconds. You just do it because he doesn't lose. Rookie four? Probably. Okay, queen okay. g2 is a perfectly reasonable move. Anything, anything? Okay. You're, you're really nervous here. I was yeah, just I saying how I... commenting stress-free, and you're like well, out of breath. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Come on, SF. I mean, both uh, Negi and Daniel were friends and colleagues, so I'm a little bit biased. Okay, um, I'm glad you... I just you... want to see them do well, okay? Knight B2 or Knight E5, good move. Rook takes G3. Nice. Tactical ah, shot. Ah, beautiful. It. There we go, there we go. Okay, oh, just straight off. He could have taken it to fix his pawn structure. Knight C6 was better. Now he, can, now he can hold this. Yeah, now he's going to hold yeah. this. He's probably yeah. going to win it, honestly. He's just the better player, and the trajectory mm -hmm. of the game is in his favor. Now he's going to win this game. I feel confident. You think Daniel's going to win? Yeah, because Shank can't make a draw. Like, he, if he draws, the team loses, so he might as well play to win, and he's going to play to lose. That's fair. Um, yeah, he's going to have to try to force here. Okay. Daniel, I, the bullet king, is... I don't like what Daniel's been doing, because now that Rook's coming to A8, okay, Daniel's going to lose again. This is just too much to deal with. Two seconds. One second. Okay, he's moving. Pawns are protected. The king is active. It's an end game. Just protect your king pawns. D7. One's going to fall, but you don't need all the pawns. Just a couple. Rook D4. Get desperate. Oh, he's losing. H4. Can't play I him. mean, you said he was losing before, and he pulled it off. So yeah, but he's definitely Come on, losing. he's going to pull it off one more time. He... He's only going to pull it off because, like, Bishop G3 is going to happen, and then Rookie there 4, you go. Okay, then King there's G2. No I really wanted Rookie 1, mate, but... Yeah, I know what you, you would, would have liked to see there. <laughs> so where's, where is Pawns going? I... Well, H3 and F3 are really weak, right? So it's hard for White's king to go anywhere, and Black's king is holding the queen side. Yep, F4. Then knight C4, and good luck. Yeah, this is... I mean, there are some little things you can try and keep putting pressure on Black, but I would just go knight C4, A5, A6, and make a queen. Um, Greg Shahardi, you said he would draw, then he would win, then he would lose. Eventually, everything's going to be all right. Exactly, Greg, exactly. Right. I know how to hedge my bets, Greg. Oh, okay. Okay, Sorry. that move I don't Wait, like. Bishop e5! Bishop e5! Yeah, but Bishop e5, the rook's still hanging, so king c4. 
Fine, fine, but fine. I, that was that was almost a moment that you you needed for him to get back here. You know when you want something so bad, you just start imagining that it happened. Yeah. It, okay. So rook takes h3, then rook d6 mate. Uh oh, mate on d6. Protected it, and now there's the pass pawn. King e2. King. Rook so, has to go to a1. That was bishop f4 oh, check was a threat. So now just is keeping his. Nerdis is keeping this really tricky. Okay, so far Shang has done nothing to prove to me that he will not win this game. Oh, I like it. Nero going in, king of four. Yep. But these. So the two pass pawns, that is terrifying. Yep. Okay, good. He's using his bishop to help stop them. 95 check. Yep. He, he can take h3 as well. Rook a4, maybe? Check first. Yeah, rook a4. Hey, you got quiet again. Is it because you're so nervous, or did you change your mic again? Uh, I think I got really loud thinking there was a pin, and my mic just broke okay. because of my excitement. Okay. It, ha it happens. Um, whoa. Oh, okay. Like, look at that go. Look at that pawn. Oh, you're right, because if you would have taken the bishop... Yeah, if we'd taken the bishop, he still would have won, but instead he put a7, and... One anyway. Yeah, you're right. He he was winning in that line as well. I see oh an extra queen gosh. for white. Danya, Danya, your team is. I'm mad at you because you're my fantasy team. Your team. He was mad on your fantasy team. Shanklin, Negi, and Naradisky all were my fantasy team. How do they even do? Do they score all eight points between them? Because I don't think Rochelle Wu scored. So Joshua Shang wins to tie the match. Eight yeah, to eight. Sam Shanklin had three points. And Daniel and Nagy both got two and a half. Okay, so Naroditsky, I'm going to go all the way back to where he made his really last and final mistake. So knight h5, rook g6. If he took on g4, a move 29. After Thank you. After pawn takes g4, then black can do something like rook to e2. And look at how active this rook is. You have a rook on the second rank, putting mm -hmm. pressure everywhere here. That looks yep. like very good counterplay and very likely enough to hold the balance. Instead, yeah. if we look at what happened in the game, he went rook g6, and after queen f3, now he still has all these terrible looking pawns, but also the queen stay on the board, which is trouble for black. You're down a pawn, your king is in worse shape. Right. Yeah, just unfortunately. It seems like almost he it. missed it. I don't see why else he would have tried rook g6. Maybe he thought he was forcing a trade or something. Well, can we talk about how you spotted rook d6? Like, can we go back to that moment as well? Yeah, can we can we go back to the highlight? I mean, rook d6 <laughs> there, just with a move 26, was just phenomenal. Just pin and Rook g6. Win. I mean, but yeah, you had to see the follow-up with knight e4, which yeah, was knight e2 and then, not uh, easy. Yeah, definitely not easy. He did spend a lot of time, and you know, you'd hope a player of his caliber would see it, but he didn't, and then he went down in... So let's go back wow. to some other Wow, Celebi Thiel subscribed with a tier one sub for 30 months. 30 wow. months of supporting chess. I mean, you get at least two norms for that, right, Hess? Yeah, true fan right there. Yeah. And Thank you. Just, you know, uh, Soggy Cheese is up next. Vinesh Ravuri versus Lee D. Mm -hmm. And Ravuri is 400 points outrated, but completely winning on the board. This Ravori guy is good. He is good. He has been playing very well. Um, so the Panda and the San Jose Hackers. Well, the Pandas have a pretty big lead. So 6-3. Yep. 6-3. Oh, Christopher Yu just lost. To whomst? To Jang D, which is what? quite the upset. Although Jang D, somebody pointed out in chat that his Blitz rating is 2,400 on chess.com, even though he's just 1966. Yeah, it's one of these underrated Chinese kids. I mean, he's born in 2007. Yeah. And I looked at yeah. the position. It was bishop and rook versus rook. And I don't know where it started. Oh, now I do. It should be a theoretical draw. But it's very hard to... Wait a second. You said... Wait. Oh. Wait, what? Christopher yeah. Yu was up the bishop. Wait, he flagged. Wait, can someone... Uh, Hang on, I, I wasn't at the game. Yeah, he flagged. Uh... Uh... 
Uh, okay, gonna go to a different game because I have nothing to say about that. So, the dirty flag technique, I mean, which is I just pulled it's, it's a strategic, oh. a strategy you need to know, and some people are very experienced in it, and clearly it's come to play today. That's just not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a win is a win. Not ideal. Oh man, yeah. Okay, that's brutal. I'm gonna stop promoting the dirty flags just because. Yeah, I mean, fun. you're up a bishop. You can never lose this, except on the clock. Yep. So. Wow. Oh man, and that would have been four six for the hackers to the pandas. Four. Yeah, that was. <laughs> that's a huge <gasps> swing, and I'm looking at Yu Yang Yi's game against uh, Eltaj Safrali, and Yu Yang Yi is even in material. He has a knight against a bishop. It looks like this game is actually going to peter out into a draw pretty soon. Not enough material yep. left. Though, you know, I always say you've got to find the right plans in order to be able to hold. Because if you make a move like h5 for black, well, here you're going to get away with it. But you don't have to be worried that at some point you take on h5 and play for f5 and then try to get your pawns rolling. But the bishop can always sacrifice on an e5 and then the king will mop up the remaining pawn. So something like that doesn't work out. There's just not enough material remaining to... Uh, really consider this anything but heading towards a draw. Right. So that's going to be a draw, seven and a half. Um, probably a Ravuri uh, is go going to be able to have the best winning chances. Ravuri, where is he? Soggy Cheese. Found him. Yeah, yeah. no, he. Wait. What just happened in the last few moves? We were, he was doing real well. And he's still doing well, but somehow I thought he was going to yeah. win this knight on f5. I guess there was, it looked like it was, it was closing in. But okay, still position looks good. So rook f7, you lose your rook to knight d4 check. So watch out for tactics. It looks like you're pinning, but there's a check that allows black to escape there. So what should black, rook h7 played? Am I? Well, wait, there's only two games left between the pan. Does. I think I'm missing a game here. The pandas? No, there are only two games left in this round. That's right. Seven to three. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. And they drew. So Ravuri went from what looked like a winning position and made a repetition into a draw. So I think it slipped out of his hands. And they needed this. The hackers really yep. needed him to pull off the upset, but it was complicated. And instead, you know, around here, around move twenty, sorry, forty-one, after rook takes f four for black, I mean, it just feels like there's got to be. Oh, did he miss rook d seven check? King b king c eight bishop b seven check. King, oh. king b eight and then bishop a six. You get the king in the corner, and the king has no help. That looks like a yeah. And, and he had four minutes on the clock as well. Yeah, not that easy to see if I'm being honest but something that he is definitely capable of seeing because the point is that well you're threatening rook d8 rook c8 mate in this position and you're also threatening in someone's just rook to b7 check forcing the king into the corner and rook to c7 back with rook c8 so it just it looks weird to put your bishop on a6 like this but you it's a mating pattern and you need to know that construction so a missed opportunity for Vinesh Ravuri, but okay, a good result, and his team is just so out of it anyway. I'll, I'll yeah, that. and uh, Safarli and Yu Yang Yi just drew as well, as you were saying earlier on. Also, people have been asking about the dirty flag or what a flag is. So, a flag is when one player loses on the clock. Yep. It's called a dirty flag if they're in a lost position or even a drawn position. It's allowed. Most people do frown upon it, and others say a win is a win. Yep. So, yeah, this looks, um, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. I said, yup, and I'm like, how am I going to justify that loss on time? I, I hope it's just a connection issue or something because Christopher Yu is 12 years old. He's extremely good. He's the youngest I am in U.S. chess history. Yeah. He was the youngest player in the history of the world to beat a 2,700-plus rated player when he beat uh, Le, Le Quang Liam at the Bay Area International just in January. So mm -hmm. all these things considered, I don't know how that happened. But Right. <laughs> Emily Nella, all the single leadies like it and he wants to put a rook on it. That's, that's an pretty awesome funny. one. That's well that's well done. 
Um, you someone's is, saying you as an no, FM. No. He's an IM elect, yeah, right? Exactly. So he is an FM officially, but as soon as the next FIDE board meeting happens, he's an international master. So I think I feel very comfortable giving him the respect of calling him an IM. But yeah, yes, yeah. officially for like the next month or whatever, he's an FM. Oh, man. Well, we still have Hopefully. four games between the Seattle Sluggers and the Kangaroos, even though it's already 9-3. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. So I have this Smirnov game open. Uh, Sam Copeland, he was younger than when Pragnananda. Pragnananda? I think that's how you say it. I always mix this up. Uh, when Pragnananda beat Howell, at least according to Chess.com's own Mike Klein. Well, Mike Klein is a pretty good reporter, so he probably double-checked his facts here. Yeah. Um, so what's going on in this position? White has two centralized pawns on d5 and e5, but they're actually a little bit weak here. Yeah, they're, wow. they're either great or in danger of being overextended, right. and his pawn on b2, similarly, right? That's either a, an amazing pass pawn or White's gonna just be able to gobble it up soon. Yep. I don't. I, think I mean, maybe if the queens were off the board and White had f4, then the pawns are actually well, no, because f4 again, it's a strong move, but it's also a weakening move. Yep. So the advantages and the drawbacks of most of the pawns in this position here. Who is this queen trade better for? So obviously Victor offered it, so he's happy taking the queens off the board. Now Anton is thinking, he can keep the pressure. He can play, you know, queen c4. Okay. Try to have some discovery attacks if he wants. Not that there's any that are particularly good, but he can have it in the bag for the future. I like queen c4 because you're also saying if you want to trade queens and play queen b4, then I can mm -hmm. maybe trade queens on b4 and play knight c6 with tempo, and that could be valuable. Right. And, okay, so he just played queen c4, so that's probably what he was thinking. Um, well, he was really thinking Alexandra said it, so let's go for gotta it. Gotta do it, yeah. yeah. If, if Daniel would have listened to me, I'm just, just saying. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, so let's see. Maybe I'm trying to figure out how to because black, you know, while these pawns look a bit menacing on d5 and e5, black mm -hmm. is just a couple moves away from being able to really say that this a b pawn is very valuable. Like right. if I go rook c7 here, I hate the look of it, but you can't queen can't go to a2 because your mm -hmm. knight on d4 will be hanging. Okay, so maybe the queen goes back to d3 to protect the knight. Yeah, then I and wonder why my rook's on c7, because I'm not going yeah, to be able Yeah, of course, you got to double up those rooks and dream of maybe one day opening up your bishop as well. But then knight c6 is always an idea, right? Yep, yep. to close that, That's down the, the issue with the open c file. The knight can just blockade it right away. I agree. And, and rook how does black push after? It's not so clear. Yeah, and rook c7 feels like, I mean, I, I'm trying to kick your queen off the diagonal, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's an awkward move to play because it also lands on a square that if I go d6 or e6, it will be under attack um, by one of my pieces. So tough position right. here, really tough. I mean, can black just keep trying to trade off the queen? I don't know why that would help, though. Okay, so rook c7. So he is going along with the idea you said. Not sure how I feel about that, though. I, I know I recommended it, but mm -hmm. it was more of like an in inquisitive Just, recommendation than a, a like. I, I'm starting to like White's position more and more because I'm looking at the black pieces. The bishop on g7 is supposed to be strong, and if the position were open, it would be, but it's stuck. The knight on h5 has nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, the pawn on b2 is a pass pawn, but it's completely blockaded, and the advantage he'd have by being able to get the open file, especially since there's no white rook that can go on c1 because of b takes c1, is not that much of an, of an advantage because white's knight is so active. Right. Yeah, no, those are all very good points. And then h5 is a terrible piece because as soon as white plays f4, you do shut down your bishop on h2, but you take mm -hmm. care of two black pieces with one move, right? The knight on h5 and the bishop on g7. So you, right. in an end game, I do have to worry about my d5 pawn, but if I could get f4 and g3 in there and then king g2, bishop g1, yes, I just said many moves, but the point is my bishop can find a new um, diagonal to work with, and knight on h5 is a harder time working with his bishop to coordinate and you know, reconfigure the setup here. So, yeah. 
So, other games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other games. We have... Um, I, I was trying to take a look. Uh, the one between Malfin Lee and Bryce Tiglin looks interesting. Oh, we got some yeah. attack going on here. I, it looks like there might be a puzzle rush, obviously, if it was... Okay. Wait, Rook so takes B7? Nice. Is that a free pawn? Yes, it is. I didn't even calculate, but it has to be a free pawn. There's... I saw the knight drop to c7 where it blocks the... Okay, but actually there was a big threat of rook takes b7, or rook takes a6 check, whatever, anyway. So you've got knight h5, some random... Yes, yeah, because white had a checkmate threat. I was yeah trying to say that, but then black moved and the game's going to be over. Yeah. So okay. I, I just showed that checkmate threat, but knight c7 was played, but now rook b7, knight b5, and do you just take on b5? Very tempted to do that. Uh, what else can I do? I can play rook. I guess I don't. Yeah, I can play rook b7 to b6 and just continue my attack that way. Right. And if the rook tries to trade off rook b7, I guess he's just hanging the pawn on c6. Yeah. And if you try to protect the pawn on c6, then. Then maybe I can. At some point, I'm thinking of sacrificing on uh, the. On B5, on B5 right? It's probably not even necessary. I can do... I don't know. Uh, yeah, what do you play after Rook C7? Because obviously it's crushing. I'm just not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to look how to be precise here. Maybe Rook B1 mm -hmm. to B4 and then go to C4 and play slowly. Looks not too terrible, but... I don't True. Know. I'll let them figure it out. <laughs> okay, that's it's too fair. late at night for this. You know, it's 11.36 p.m. Eastern, just, yeah. Broken lungs, 67. I need to eat dinner, but I can't look away from the stream. This is so interesting. Thanks, commentators. That was a Can great you bring comment. your dinner to your computer? I know that's not recommended. My mom always got mad at me about doing that when I was younger, but it might be worth it. it. might be worth it just so you can get your nourishment and get your chest nourishment as well. Just throwing it out there. That, that's good advice. Who could have thought you could watch TV and be entertained at the same time? Yeah, but this, you know, it's problematic in and of itself, but we'll just ignore the problems and think about the benefits. True. Um, well, I almost forgot that the Chengdu Pandas and the San Jose Hackers had another round just because it seems like the Pandas have almost won, but hey. Never say never. You mean because the pandas are eight to four and only need a draw? Oh my gosh! Why is? Should we? So, Vinish Ravori just won. He has. Was there a queen blunder? How Wait. the heck did this happen? Where's his game? Who is he playing? He was playing Jang Di. You gotta see this because once you go to the. Oh, I found it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh what what. Ah, oh, he played queen d7, he mouse slipped. Oh, Let me check it out. It's on move eight. We're seeing a oh, lot of Oh my <laughs> I just, I just saw it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Look at that move, queen d7. Oh, I feel bad. Yeah. Well, at least his team is going to win. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little heartbreaking there. Queen d7, I've been... Going back and forth, just like showing them move over and over again until I'm sick, not only of the position, but just like physically ill from the, you know, the screen going queen up and down. And so the only question was, as Greg shot, he says, which, which dis piece to capture with is the only difficult decision? And then, <laughs> okay. So it took oh, the queen man. and yeah, this is, yeah. You know, at this point it doesn't matter. Everything wins, but yep. yikes. Yikes. So wow. San Jose still has a chance if they sweep. Right? They need right? a win on all boards. That, that was definitely helpful. Let's um, check out Mama Jarv's game against Yu Yang Yi. These are a top 12 matchup, I think, because Mama Jarv, I think, is number five in the world now because yep. he dropped a lot of points at Tata I thought Steel. He was third at some point, but you're right, Tata Steel. Yeah, okay. he, he was, and then he, you know, I did commentary on his games, and he dropped a lot of points. And then Yu Yang Yi, I think, is steady around mm -hmm. number 12 in the world. Something like that, doing really well. Someone said something interesting. Lay life, mouse slips don't get take backs. What would you think of something like take back insurance? Where nope, no, nope. But what if it ha it's for both people though? Just be better with your mouse. 
<laughs> I'm serious. Wow. Like, it, the, it's, the burden is completely on the player to make sure that they're making the move they want to make. So Robo Hess is unforgiving. Well, but I, a serious, you, you lost three games of the tournament. Uh, who cares? A serious question. The most is your problem. Yeah. If I, if you, I'm playing you, and I make a move that I realize isn't so good, and I say, mm -hmm. "Oh, it was a, a mouse slip." Like, how do you know that was actually a mouse slip or not? What's? I mean, Queen D7. Yeah, that was pretty bad. I, I, I feel bad about it, but you know. When it's that obvious, but you're right. You're right. You know, like sometimes some... <laughs> this is the first time I've seen Hess, and I love him. Be better with the mouse. <laughs> who who said? <laughs> seventy seven. Yeah, I mean, just, just it's a problem. Okay, chat. Well, when the mouse slip happens of you happens to you as well, remember this conversation and know that I was fighting for your rights. Yeah, Mama Jarov is fighting for his team, though. That's what he's doing right now. Because that is he's true. gaining space on the king side and just slowly pressing against uh, Yu Yang Yi here. He's just got more space to work with. He controls the pawn breaks. I say this mm -hmm. every broadcast I've ever done. The side that controls the pawn breaks is generally the side that has the better position. And here, um, that with the pawn g5, you're already questioning mm -hmm. where's this knight going to go. If you play hg5, hg5, you've opened up the h file in unfavorable terms for black. The reason why right. I say unfavorable is if now black uh, has a bishop capture on e6, you can no longer take back with the rook because your rook is needed to protect this rook on h8. So this is one of the many things that come to mind in a position like this. And knight g8. Wow. I'm playing knight h5 here for white, just going after g7. So black is forced to be this defensive. Clearly the pawn break was overpowered. Ugh. I mean, it, it, so yeah, knight h5, then he has to play what? Bishop b f8? I, bishop f8 would be hilarious. Well, you don't really want to play g6 because, like, let's say knight h5, g6, then I think I play knight g7, and I'm threatening moves like pawn h5 and just blasting open the king side, and also f4, f5, things like that. Knight takes e6 is coming. It's just, yeah, this is not a great configuration for. And knight h5 played. Bishop f8 followed. So, rook a to e1. I like rook to g1, potentially, as just a way to continue on the g-file, but now f4, f5, just keep playing like this, and, and black will be very be fortunate better. to survive. Okay, so let's say the hackers are able to win this. 6-8. Just curious how the other games are doing. Okay. Um, so that's I just want to make sure they're not losing on another... Sephar Lee's playing Forward. against Li Chao. Okay. It's very early, but I very early, prefer yeah. Sephar Lee's position. He has the slightly superior pawn structure because his double pawns are better than his opponent's pawns. I like the open H file. And these, mm -hmm. these double C pawns are really the problem here. Now, I guess you have to take on D6. And C takes D6, undouble those pawns that I was just complaining about. But these pawns, the C and D pawns together, have their own sort of weaknesses. And white can eventually play for b4 and in a queenside expansion, and that might be able to work eventually on the queenside squares. So cd, king f2, d5, they'll play bishop d3. Um, right. And, well, white, white had the nice semi-open h file, but it seems like he won't be able to follow up with it now. Right. But that's okay. He'll just create another weakness. Yep, b4. Because he, he has to play pro win. Play b4, and then either go knight a4 to c5, or mm -hmm. knight e2 to d4. Because once you play b4, you stop black from playing c5, and your yep. options, of, actually I'll put these in blue rather than red, because these are positive things. d4, c5, and you actually your king. If the knights got traded, you could see this king dart from f2 to c5. It's actually a very common motif in, in end games of this structure. So the bishop on right. d3 is much better than the bishop on c8, which is a very defensive piece, covering f5. The bishop on d3 has longer range on uh, the, the diagonals here. Yeah, I, I like before it, it creates a backward pawn almost for black here. So that's a really important move in this type of pawn structure here, because if black would have been able to push c5, yep. that would have been extremely helpful for him. He may have been able to actually squeeze white's position a little bit here or at least just not not be so constricted afterwards i completely agreed so i love safra lee's position 
I'm going to check on Mama Jarov really quickly. Okay, so it's very similar to where we left off. Just uh, this move, Bishop d7 was played, and still looking very good for Chakriar. So we'll come back here. Christopher Yu and Li Di. So Yu with the black pieces. And what to make of this position in imbalanced pawn structure? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this kind of end game with two on one for black on the king side, excuse me, on the queen side, versus the five on four for white in the center and the king side? Well, before I think about that, Christopher Yu hasn't won a single game today. So you're saying it's it's time. This it's time. Moment. It's time. He's been. This has been probably his worst performance so far because he has been playing really well. Um, in terms of the pawn structure, I do like white better because I don't think Black's pawns are going to be able to get an attack on the king side. And sure, if it was a pure pawn and king endgame, he might be able to get a pass pawn on the two versus one on the queen side. But here with pieces on the board, it just gives white an extra target to attack. Right. That's very true. Yeah, you know, if you can imagine these queens off the board and even these rooks off the board, the advantage for black, as we've been talking about, is this two-on-one on the queen side, where it takes longer and it distracts this white king to run all the way over the queen side, while black's king will station itself in the center of the board and maybe go after some of white's pawns. So in the interim, mm -hmm. as Alexander just very uh, correctly pointed out, that with the queens on the board especially, this queen on a3 keeps the rook tied to a7 and keeps the queen tied to e7. So it's a very flexible queen for white. Yep. And, um, okay, bishop c4. Okay, don't, Interesting. Don't um, so bishop. he's offering the bishop trade, which, yeah, if black takes and rook takes c4, he's activating white's rook. So it makes sense that he didn't want that. But this is exactly uh, what we're talking about, though, where black is now in an endgame with the two on one on the queen side. This seems like wait, right. an well, ill-advised decision. It does, because if he's able to get a pass pawn here, even though it seems like it's a equal material position, he would have the advantage. Play queen e4 to protect e7. There yeah. it is. To protect e7, yeah, threaten mate in one. All yep, right. so queen can't take on a7 because of queen b1. Yep, that would be a big problem. So white just needs to make an escape square for his king here, and then Christopher can push something like a6 and try to come up with some plan to trade either of his pawns for the a2 one, pawn. Because if he, if he has a pass pawn and a queen, and White's king is so far, and there's no perpetual. <laughs> okay, yes, a lot of conditions, but then he can try to fight for a win. Yep. No, I mean, you're, that's sometimes what's needed, though, is these all these conditions to work out perfectly. Yeah. We saw that in the game between Dreyev and uh, Rochelle Wu in the first, right. first games of the day, because it was an even, a level position, but he outplayed him because he created a tactic here, a tactic there, won the game. And same thing mm -hmm. for Christopher Yu here. He needs to get a6 in. Then eventually go queen c6 or something with the pawn not hanging uh, on e7. Uh, Safarli's so king is on c5. What did I tell you about the king run? But c5, what's that guy doing there? It, I have food. It's a great attacker. I love it. Now, if you, okay. if you switch that rook for a bishop on f8, I might just be checkmated immediately. But okay, <laughs> that's not happening. So, okay. So knight f is, is white still better here? No. Yeah. I think yes. So I he, think yes. But. And he even sacrificed the pawns. So knight e4 check came. Instead of taking it, which allows black to play f takes e4 with check to win the piece back, he said, well, who cares about this check? Who cares yeah. about this pawn on g3? My king is going all the way up the board. And look at this decision. Mm -hmm. Don't take, didn't take on c6. That might get the king under pressure too quickly. So went knight e2 first. And now bishop f5. Bishop f5, knight d4, and black might be resigning soon. Seriously. The king is very safe on c5. My knight covers the b5 check. My rook is Not just safe, but helpful. Oh, He's yeah. putting pressure on c6. Oh, yeah. This is, this is brutal. This isn't a passive king. This is the kind of king you want to go to battle with, the one who doesn't send his troops out, but leads his troops yep. into war. This yep. is what I like to see. I don't like that Safali did not just take that knight, though. I would have taken that knight so quickly thrown my knight on d4 and said that I will just, even if I'm not winning right now, yeah. I will win the game. Just yeah, because now he can play knight e3, which is pretty well positioned. Knight e3 is certainly... It's a nice outpost. Yeah. Even though it, it opens up the white 
light squared bishop towards h7. So maybe knight d4 um, is the response because you take on g2 and then rook e7 looks pretty painful. Mm -hmm. Just coming after your h7 pawn, your c6 pawn is going to fall. Things like this look uh, very active for white. Even rook g1 instead of rook e7 just to win the g5 pawn. So yeah, your ideas are totally on point here. The knight e3 looks good, but opening up that bishop is something that's a little bit sad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what to do as black here. I, I just, you bishop takes a five, followed by knight d4 is strategically lost. But now if okay, I go bishop Okay, so you can still take. You but then still you take. rook b5 check. So you throw in this rook b5 check. Right. Because my king can no longer take on c6. Your rook protects it. But, but it's all, your king is safe on d4, though. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this is still very good. Because at the end of this, I even go king to e5. <laughs> after <laughs> and I put my knight on d4. It just it never ends. Um, my king is the best piece on the board, and I'm going to make use of it. That does not happen often. Okay, so knight d4. Um, does he think that his bishop is more important? He's hoping that after knight d4, rook e8 check, he's going to play. Oh, okay. Okay, rook e8 check. I think. King g7. He takes the knight. He doubles the rooks, or yeah, this is this is not good. God knows what. Yeah, this looks winning. Well, not winning, but very good. No, this looks... You're, you're right the first time. Winning yeah? is how okay. I would put this. Okay. Well, what a comeback this would be if they managed to tie. So how to win To this? win 4 zero. So do I play Rook D8 and just say, okay. <laughs> keep the pins alive? <laughs> Rook D8 looks good. <laughs> keep the dreams alive. Rook D8. Just You can't do anything. Rook E1, perfectly good move. You this, keep, this is also good. Because you can't move this bishop anywhere. My Rook is coming right now. Rook E8. Where's your bishop going? This is hilarious. Rook e8, bishop is stuck. He has to protect it with or his this, rook. Yeah, this is, I mean, king c5, winning c6. Take it. Or play a4, wow. a5, a6. Literally do anything you want. This, what, so what do you think? Game of the week? Um, or in contention? Definitely in contention because he, El Eltosh Safali is playing pretty perfectly. You know, yeah. Maybe small inaccuracies here and there. I don't know. I don't, you know, I, who am I to criticize? It looks perfect to me. Don't have an engine running, but um, yeah, it looks really nice. I'd go A4, A5 here. Just push that pawn to A6 or try to. I mean, <laughs> if I go A4, A5, right? Yeah. You have to go A6 yourself, and then I go King B6, and I'm literally going to win your bishop by going King B6, Rook B8, Rook takes B7. <laughs> With King D6, just... You know, I, I'm just smiling because this position is so entertaining. Yeah. I feel like if Safarli had his webcam on, he'd be giggling a little. I think they bit. do. All players are on webcam. Um, I mean, if he was streaming, we'd all be right. enjoying his one. Yeah. Right, but this is just... So. I mean, he can still play King C7 here, and the bishop has nowhere to go. Is he going to promote But obviously king? he can protect it. But... King C7, King B8? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if he'd want to promote his king for another piece because it's already the best piece on the board. Yeah, that's true. But let's check in on how his teammates are doing because Mami Dara was in a great position last time we checked in. Uh oh, I think his advantage is gone a little bit. I'm seeing and opposite Branzor, color thank you for subscribing with Twitch Prime. <laughs> and Jules Cheat, I want to get a game where the winning line is do whatever you want. That is a dream, Jules Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the dream, and that's why, you know, it's hard for me to even look at that position. Okay, Mamajarov took on f7, but you he took on d4. He's definitely thrown away the majority slash all of his advantage here because it's rook, bishop, and four, and bishops of opposite mm -hmm. color. Yeah, this mm -hmm. looks like, let's look at Christopher Yu's game to see if he's made any progress. Nope, that game also looks equal. So, okay, despite Safar Lee playing a great game, I think it's going to be uh, just quite a bit too little. Yeah. And now he would love to take back his forfeit on time in the first game. Of course, I mean, he would like to take it back regardless, but... So, I mean, Christopher Yu wasn't able to get a pass pawn on the queen side, so he's trying to open up the king and get something there, but if he opens up the king too much, then he's probably at risk of perpetual himself. Right. But it's a good <sighs> effort. You know, you gotta give him credit for trying. Yeah, of course, of course. So d5, I like that move because now the b7 pawn's under attack. The queen's been blocked off from the b7 pawn. If you take on d5, you lose e7. 
So I think this was a good decision to try to force measures and probably lead towards a draw, an even clearer draw. Yeah, this looks, looks stabilizing. So this game heading towards a draw. Yep. Mamajarov heading towards a draw. Safar Lee, King is promoted, is on B8. Maybe he should just win two points. It's like in foosball, when you score with the goalie, you get two points when you win with the king. No? Yes? Yeah, no, I, I give him three points for this. Look at this <laughs> There we go. The king's on B8, and it's going to help the C pawn promote, right? Yes. Here comes <laughs> C6, C7. My king's perfectly placed on B8 to help my pawn get to the other side. Good night. Um, LD, uh, LDS Jedi oh, good night. Knight. LDS Jedi Knight. Thank you. Woo. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, it's just, it was so, this game is so exciting, but it's always sad when it only means that he's going to beat a super grandmaster with the white pieces and not help his team survive. In but, advance. I mean, the other games aren't over. We've seen crazy things happen this game. Nagy winning on time okay. in the position that he did. Saffir Lee is about Christopher Yu losing. Take it. Okay. The, the Wi-Fi gambits, it, it, it's still on. Okay, Mama Jarov, I don't know how he's going to win this, but maybe he can try. Christopher Yu, don't know how he's going to win this either, but he can also try. He can try, exactly. Like Queenie H check, I just don't see how this king's getting it out of the way. But I mean, maybe he's inspired by his teammate, and we're going to see king some run, creative you know, so king play, because it doesn't really matter if he loses. Like He's not going to hold back, right? Yeah, you're right. The loss is the same as... Uh, draw for the team, but he has lost all his games today, and nobody wants to go out of, out of four. But he listened to your speech, and it's a new tournament, new game, new tournament, right? Yeah, you're, you mean you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, so Farley's game is definitely the most interesting one, so I guess we can skip there for a while. Um, okay. Black has a pass pawn, but he has one rook, so he can't protect it forever. Yeah, big problem for black is the king is likely to get checkmated on this g7 king. So like you mm -hmm. go rook takes d3 here, and then after rook takes a5, play a move like rook to d6, or king to e6 is probably uh, even better, because then I'm just bringing my king into e6, rook d7 check to follow, and your king is likely to be found in harm's way, king e6 played. So, I mean, this is really a, a very instructive game by Seth Farley. King f6 now, keep that king shouldered onto the... Right. Last rank. Is rook, isn't rook a6 a thing? Yeah, oh, I guess king, king f5. f5 and get the pawn on f4. Yep. Yep. And then I have a pass pawn of my own. And mm -hmm. rook, bishop against rook, we know is hard. Rook, bishop, and a pass f pawn, not so difficult. So looking good for Saf. I mean, really, uh, where's Sam Copeland? Sam, you here? He hasn't been here. You've called him before, but he hasn't appeared yet. <sighs> Sam Copeland. I hope you show your face because this is a candidate for game of the week for sure. Anyway, so Christopher, you, I'm looking at, wait, Mama Jarvis game, what happened? He's now, okay, still even in material. I thought he was up a pawn, but that F pawn okay. can advance a little bit. It did, it did. Um, I mean, his king is stuck on the first rank, which is. Which is definitely annoying. Yeah, um, but. It's it's uneven. It's the black king stuck too, right? It's stuck protecting b7. So both True. kings are stuck a bit. The f pawn is trying to roll, but it's hard to get it to f6 with the bishop on d4 and the rook can go to h6 or to f2 or something like that. So okay, still likely to be a draw. Just requires a bit of accuracy, it seems like. Yep. Uh, and I'm looking quickly at Christopher Yu's game because there might be a perpetual. Um, yeah, queen somewhere check, queen f8 check. Yeah, queen somewhere check, it just... Just rolled off the tongue, you know? I don't know, if he plays king e6... Hey, Sam Copeland's in the chat, he listened. Yay! The Beetlejuice mes method. Yeah. <laughs> this game is a draw. Saffir Lee's teammates let him down after a brilliantly played game by him. Well, they did, they did their best, you know. Yep. So. Honest work. Mamadiar was still trying. Credit to him. 
Christopher right. Yu, I don't know how he's even planning to escape these checks, so it looks like he's just going to have to agree to a draw soon. Because if you escape the checks, you probably just lose all of your kingside pawns and will lose after that. Um, True. Oh, look how he ended the game, Safar Lee. He just took the pawn. Wow. Yeah. Such style. Yeah, just, rook takes a2. He probably could have checkmated him with king e6 instead of uh, rook a8 check, but who needs checkmate when you can just play rook takes a2, point being rook a2, bishop d5 check, and then I win the rook, and this bishop and pawn versus king is easily winning as I get my king in and then promote. So well done by El Taj Safar Lee. Well done is an understatement. Feeling but. quite strong that that is game of the week material. He beat a 2,700 plus player by jetting his king from F2 all the way over to C5. And that's just phenomenal stuff. I mean, it's definitely a consolation prize for his hard work. Even if his team isn't able to win this match, that was super impressive. Yep. And Mama Jar was still trying. But as soon as Christopher Yu makes a draw, I feel like Mama Jar will also just shake hands and... Yeah. So bishop f6 for Yu Yang Yi or something like that. Bishop a3 is another option to go rook b2 check. Mm -hmm. to try to win the b pawn. So both of those options look quite good. I'd probably play bishop... I don't know. Bishop a3 looks reasonable. Like bishop a3, if you go rook e6, I can even just check you on b2. Yeah. And take your b pawn. Okay. Bishop f6. Hey, someone just asked in the chat for the ambulance, and I hear one coming. <sighs> Here it comes. Is it actually? Yeah. Let's see if you guys can hear it, because I can hear it. Your ambulance senses are tingling or something? I haven't heard it yet. It's a bit far away. Are you trying to make a joke about the position? No, no, no. There actually was an ambulance. Oh, okay. It, it seemed to have turned down. Nino, 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 Nino. <laughs> Okay. There you go. I got you covered. Mama Jar of Drew. Look at oh what? You you didn't take the rook? Did you just see that? Like he could have Yes, made I a, did. He could have made an immediate draw by taking this rook and then just bringing his king wherever because a bishop's the opposite color means that you can't kick my bishop off its black right. square. Right. He, he just needs a draw. I mean, come on, he's not playing for a win here. Why didn't he take that? Well, I don't... Well, Christopher Yu drew his game oh, as well. Oh, okay. So the match so, is already over. The match is over. Yep. Okay. So the match is over, but Yu Yang Yi just trying to win this game, I guess. That would be quite the turn. And the position is just so equal. Like Rook takes C6 is now a threat with, with check. So that's why I went Rook F2 to get out of Bishop E4 coming with check. So how to end this game? Bishop mm -hmm. C3. Bishop okay. g5 also is in a move. But what are the... Th oh, yeah, I guess you're threatening rook d2. Um, but he just moves his bishop. Where? e4. He answered my question for me. I love it when the players do that. Yeah. So can black try some kind of king d4? Probably not. <sighs> Can't win that way. This is a draw. Draw, 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 draw. Draw, draw, Banks. Calculations. Fur Twitch is missing your arrows. My arrows? Want, yeah. Want some arrows? Okay. Well, this pawn is under attack here on c6. A rook d2 check followed by rook d6. Seems to be the option because you force the king over to c1. And then if you trade on d6 after king takes d6, well, the king is very close to blockading this f pawn. And there's also going to be trades over here on the a4 square. Am I done? I feel like... I, I liked how fast you talked. I was about to count like words per minute, but I was too slow to get to it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just... That speed was... Trust me, if, if when it comes like, bullet chess, I'm a mile a minute. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Whenever it's bullet chess, I just can't keep up with you. Too many arrows, Tri-King says. Still kind of mm -hmm. slow compared to Ikaru. I mean, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I timed him out. What's she trying to do? Hey, what was that? That was so it just spam. It was so long, and I I was trying to read it all, and it just distracted me. Hess doesn't do well with spam. He just actually tries to read it because he reads as quickly as he talks, and he's he's almost I, gonna get I, it all. I mean, I read it. I just didn't understand it at all. 
Okay. Like, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you and no, say no, that. No, no, I, I was just so you caught me confused. Barbarous. Like, something about Mama Jarv and Elvis, and that was bizarre. So okay. can they agree well, to draw? What are they doing? Yeah, come on, guys. Let us go. <laughs> Let me go to sleep. It's twelve oh four a.m. Let our people go. I didn't think you were gonna go there. Oh, okay. That was a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's fine. I, I know the lyrics, but. Uh, do 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 do. Vert One twitch. minute left. Yep. Okay, it's getting a little more complicated. I mean, maybe he's trying to find some checkmate here. I guess if. You know, we always say that we like fighting chess until it's the last game. <laughs> We've been doing commentary. If this was seven and a half, seven and a half right now, I'm all for it. But right. it's already over, and Shangdu has won the match. So, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wait, that was, that was pretty hip. It was almost as good as your beatboxing. Oh, no, don't talk about that. No, okay. It's going to happen at some point. Um, if White wins this game somehow, I will laugh. Beatbox? No. Come on. You got to put some stakes on the line. Some stakes? What if the viewers are vegetarian? Um, well, then we're not scared of them. No, that's not how the lyrics go. Wait. I'm not singing anything anymore. What are you singing? The song with... Your boyfriend said he's got beef, but I'm a vegetarian uh, and I ain't scared of him. It's funny because I wasn't even thinking about that, but good good reference there. You're you're impressing me tonight. That's that's what I've been trying to do all my life. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's What's it's this? about that time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Poker commentator with the mic drop. I'll take that. I don't know who it was for. So Yu Yang Yi is getting to a minute. Maybe he's going to blunder. Yeah, 303. The chat knows who I'm talking about. They got your back. There we go. Thank you, chat. I appreciate it. There's no checkmate here because the bishop covers f1. Mm-hmm. And what else? Bishop c4 check can be played if the rook moves like to f2 to kick the king away. You can't go rook takes a4 because bishop c2 check will win the rook. You can't go yep. king takes a4 because you lose your bishop. Both a pawns are in the right corner, so you can't think about you know going down bishop and pawn versus king. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else I should say here? Rook f2 looks like a good move. F2. Just trying to give you a rook d2 check. Yeah. Um, maybe white can play rook b6 here. Get the king a little farther. Yeah. <laughs> rook b6, bishop b4. Plays. Okay, this looks like it's what's going to happen. Then, Well, if he plays bishop b4, his king can try to advance to e2 and oh, true come help. True story, actually. Protect the pawn. Whoa, um, okay, rook before. Rook before. Now we're talking. Yes. Now we're talking. Okay. Now it was wait, worth wait, waiting. Wait, wait, wait. Well, is Black's king in time? Hold up, hold up. Rook before, bishop mm -hmm. before, king e2, king c3, king e3. Your king is not getting back to your f pawn, or is it? Bishop f8, king, bishop b5, and then king e4, king d5, king e6. What? Hold up. We'll see. So you want bishop b5. Okay, but I, I'm still not sure about that other line. <laughs> what, because I don't even under understand who's playing for a win? <laughs> I think white is. Uh, it's, it's funny because black looked like he was earlier on. Take the rook. I mean, yeah, well, obviously white's up upon here, but <laughs> rook given fine. the way the end game's been going, I did think that was a great comment. No, I agree. I, I, I thought black was playing for a win or a little bit earlier as well. Right. Bum, bum, okay. I mean, Yu Yangi is now getting into some serious time pressure, so there's some chance he might lose. If he loses this game, that would be crazy. Yeah. Rooks yeah, it would be. A threat um, I mean, okay, so White shouldn't trade off his Rook if he's pushing for the win. I mean, he's been 
sweating for it for some time now. Okay, he kept his rook on the board. Thank you. Is there any way he can help his pawn move a little further? Yeah, if he traded rooks. But I'm going to look at that after the game before we mm -hmm. say goodbye to everybody. But I thought there, he could have traded rooks there and tried to bring his king up into the action. So rook b5 check is... Oh, wait. Rook b5 check is no good discovery. So rook b5 check, king takes a4 is possible. Right. That's funny. Okay, so he has to play rook d5, only move... Oh, actually, never mind. He could have gone back, but then he lost the pawn, and they would finally draw. Yeah. God forbid they draw. Yeah, right? Just do us all a favor. No, I, I have to respect Mamadarov playing for a win. His opponent has eight seconds left. Oh, he's going to win on time. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, no, he, he's actually going to swindle him. I see Wait, the flag. Can he hang the eight pawn here? Oh, then rook d4 check. Okay, I hung my bishop. So play bishop somewhere. Play bishop e8, maybe, or something like that. Just get out of the way of... Rook d4, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, Bishop. You know how nice. you hear ambulances? Yeah. I see dirty flags. Yeah. So. No, you're you're spot on here. King f2 or something like that. Right, because he wants to get closer to the rook so he can eventually stop the checks. Yep. And then the rook can go to d6 for white and try to kick this bishop out at some point. All right. So now okay. let's make progress. How do we do that? King g2. Played. Nice. King. And he could advance his king. Yep. Nice, slow and steady. Oh, he has to trade. Wait, wait, wait. Take, take. The ki okay, the king gets back just in time. Rook d4, bishop d4, king f4, king b4, and the king runs to e7. I mean, the pawn is on the right square, but it's... Yeah, he's catching the pawn. I think yeah. f6. King d6, and then the problem is you go king g6, f7 at some point, and black king sits on e7. And you're not making your precious queen. Right. So King G6. Your, your precious queen. Yeah. Known uh, draw now. Because Well, I, your ambulance didn't come and my dirty flag didn't either. So. Yep. This is tough. You know, the, the match is over, but they're still going. Credit to both players. Mm -hmm. Credit to both of us, especially you for putting up for me for even longer than... Maybe we should have had to. Can they just agree on a draw now? It's move 90. There's no more <laughs> winning opportunity. Yeah, okay. They, they agreed to a draw. All right. There so we, we got to go back. Since it's the last game, and you know me. Yep. I Tell love... me what move you're going back to. Once I find it, I'll let you know. I okay. love to be instructive when I can be, but I'm not always accomplishing that feat. Okay, found it. Move 68, rook to b4. Okay. So rook takes b4. Wait, was it this position? No, it's maybe... Yeah, it was there. So I thought rook takes b4 check. Mm -hmm. And if pawn takes b4, then I have my a pawn rolling. And we saw a game like this earlier where the, the bishop cannot stop both pawns, right? Because right. Uh, I will just start pushing one of them as a yep. distraction and then win with the other. So, right. so he has to take with the bishop. Yeah. Then I thought king to e2. Mm -hmm. And if you go king to c3, I thought I was no king to e3. And I'm sort of shouldering your king out. But, right. but maybe you have like a move, I don't know, bishop to f8 or something. No, but bishop f8, then my king goes up to e f e4 and to e5. So where you you are trying to somehow get your king to be fast enough to help the f6 pawn exactly. get tra forcibly traded by the black bishop because then you're winning since your bishop is going to protect the pawn on e4. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the, if you keep the king away from the action, your king can mm -hmm. just go king e4, king e5, and then help shoulder away the enemy king and work mm -hmm. to promote your pawn. So I think that this was what the right way to go forward. Maybe there's some last-ditch effort by black that holds on, but at first glance, I'm not really seeing it. And just to show everybody what I was talking about, bishop of eight, king e4. Uh, let's say you, you know, king b4. I simply have bishop to b5, and after king c5, I go king e5. And so my king is mm -hmm. faster here to start attacking your bishop. And so I can go king e6, f6, f7, king d7, and king e8, because I'm not allowing your king to get to the very important e7 square. So I probably, you know, there probably was some defense somewhere. I'm too tired but to figure it out. But this did seem like the best continuation Mami Darov could have tried for. And maybe it was a winning endgame. <laughs> yeah. We're achieving maximum Hess levels, yes. Um, well, you know. It would be even more maximum if this happened like 
three hours ago when I was really <laughs> in the heat of the moment, ready to do right. my commentary. Well, I thought that was, that was a good last end game to show there. No, I, it just it felt right. It felt right to end on the note, but actually, yeah. it feels even more right to go back to El Taj Safar Lee's position and let's just talk about for a hot second how his king. I mean, but then we're going to sign off because I know yeah. I'm tired. Yeah, and... for sure. Let's pull it up. Um... I got it. So move 19, your knight f6. He just said, Okay, I'm just going to look on the Twitch board. He just said, Knight e4 check, whatever, king e3. Take my pawn on g3, whatever, king d4. f4, yeah, whatever, king c5. So that king darted from f2 to c5 real fast there. Um, it was like a just on a bullet train, the Shinkansen just right to c5. <laughs> and it didn't wait for anything. So king ran to c5. Eventually, it went even more up the board after some trades, but the king made its way to d6, to c7, to b8. Sam Copeland, you, I already got your attention before. That's game of the week to me. Alexandra, I had a pleasure doing commentary with you. I'm sorry that you As had to put up with I. me for so I'm, long. I'm glad we were able to see that last game there. It was beautiful. It's been a pleasure, as always. Aww. You don't have to lie to everybody just to lie to me. It's fine. You can. Oh, you you know I'm honest. I, I will roast you eventually, but. Yeah, you said not you came this. up with an idea for our next stream, which is on Thursday. Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Well, on that note, we're gonna say goodnight to everybody. Up next is Ben Feingold. We're rating Ben Feingold, the one and only. I believe his um, account is just GM Feingold. No, it's GM Benjamin Feingold. So yep. you'll be getting rated his way. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. We'll be back Thank on Thursday. Thank you so much. Bye. Crew.